Good evening, everybody, and welcome to WCFL Doll Fans Talk. I hope everyone's having a good night tonight. Everyone doing well. Welcome to tonight's show. We got plenty to talk about, plenty going on, and let me go ahead and bring on our guests. We have our co-hosts, Mr. Winners himself. What's up, brothers? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? How are you guys everybody doing tonight? Wonderful, wonderful. Let's bring on the old man, John O'Hanlon, the bearded What's wonder. Up? What's up, Wall? How's everybody out there in Dolphins land? Good. I, I hope they're doing pretty good. They're a Dolphin, so they got to be doing good. Bring on the young man, Mr. Ethan Stepp. What's going on, everybody? How you doing, Ethan? I'm doing good. Glad to see y'all tonight. Good to see getting you all too, that homework, Getting all that homework done? I'm caught up right now, man. So I'm on here tonight. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. no did you not? Did you not get a haircut? You can't show us your picture. Oh, look, I I, <laughs> I ain't got a haircut yet. I ain't shaved yet. <laughs> Join the club, man. Join the club. Uh, give a shout, shout out to Nene and Adam Sadowski joining us. Uh, let's go ahead and bring on our special guest, Mr. Larry K. Yeah, How you doing, Larry? What's up, Larry? Fellas. Fellas. What's up, Larry? Hello. How are you, brother? I'm great, my brother. Happy to be here. Happy to be with you guys, and I appreciate the invite, and I like the vibe we got going already. We had some of it backstage, so I'm hyped up. Oh, yeah. man. You went for a treat, Larry. Yes, sir. All we do, we talk to talk, and we disagree here and there, but we agree to disagree, and that's it. We just have fun. I love yes. it. So, so, Dolphin winners, I'll let you start this off as usual. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have two new rule changes in the NFL right from the door. We're going to just jump right into the fire. We got a brand new rule change of the kickoff, and we got a brand new tackling rule change. We are going to ask the guests tonight. I'm going to do one better. I'm going to start doing this from now on. We're going to ask the guests, which, which topic would you like to attack first? Would you like to tackle the kickoff rule, or would you like to tackle the tackling? I like the kickoff because I'm kind of interested. I kind of have a different view than I thought I would on that one. The tackle one, we already know how I feel. Like a lot of people feel the same way. <laughs> well, we, we're definitely going to revisit the tackling one, definitely. Um, but yeah, let's go into the kickoff rule. Larry, uh, what are your feelings on the new rule changes and what effects do you think it's going to do for the game now? Bro, so the, the kickoff rule, when I first heard about it, I wasn't even tuned in yet because I was too busy stewing over the the swivel hip drop thing and we get to this kickoff and i'm like what the hell is going on with this kickoff you know let me take a look at it and and when i'm reading it i'm like it i'm confused you know they're they're all sitting on a certain line and they can't move until the ball gets put in play and i'm like but then i saw it illustrated like the way they do it in the xfl or something and it looks to me and you guys jump in and correct me if i'm wrong it looks to me like we got two teams lined up not far from each other, almost as if it was a line of scrimmage with a little bit more room there. And then they can't move until the ball's put into play. I believe either if somebody catches it or it hits the ground and it's right. live and there's no fair catches. Well, here's my thing. I hated the way kickoffs were going the last few seasons where they move the kickoff up. It's always a touchback. And what really bothers me is the onside kicks are completely ineffective as I understand it, this new rule, I don't think it does much for him because you have to notify the other team if you're doing it onside, which I right. hate. I yeah. Let's just get it out of the way that I hate the on, not having an onside, not having a surprise onside. It completely removes a, a serious element of the game. It could change a game you know, in after halftime on a random kickoff, and certainly at the end of the game, you're going to need some prayer. If you can't do an onside kick, it's a huge loss. However... Right. The actual lineup and the way that the team can kind of wait and then butt heads after a guy actually catches a ball. If we see the runner put the ball in play more often than we have the last few years and it creates the opportunity for more yardage or for a breakout you know, kick return, it mm -hmm. might add an interesting element to the game. So that makes me a little bit curious to see it kind of play out because maybe we add something to the game that we haven't had the last few years. How it's going to work, I don't know. That's that's my take, and it's so weird and foreign that I think our first reaction is, what the hell is this? But I'm kind of curious to see if it adds something. 
If it doesn't add anything, then I'm going to hate it. But Well, I'll, I'll put my two cents in before I pass it on to John and Ethan and Paul. I, I've watched the XFL before it went into its extinctness um, before the pandemic had shut it down because that's the reason why. Because it started gaining, it started gaining uh, steam, but then the pandemic had really kind of shut it down. And after right. the pandemic shut it down and never was revisited until the rock and his ex-wife bought the uh, company so once they bought the company and like i said i watched it beforehand i think it's a good idea for the nfl it will make it exciting um it's going to be different it's going to it's going to take you know some taking getting used to, used to and stuff like that but i think i understand what the nfl is trying to do they're trying to cut down on injuries i get it i get it i know they don't want a lot of injuries and all that but um it's going to just you know like i said it's going to you know get some used to it's going to get some time to getting used to it you know what i mean so uh ethan how do you feel about it well you know um, starting off i watched you know the xfl and i kind of i kind of like seeing it i mean it was something different you know and um i mean i think i think it's going to benefit us with our speed i mean you know they say barrios was going to be such a great Special teams guy, and I think I think this would help him out. A chain back there, I, th I think this is going to be good for us. John, uh, I pretty much agree with what all you guys said. Uh, my feeling is the NFL is trying to produce more offense. You know, if they can get more scoring, you get more people interested because the public likes scoring. They don't like defensive games for the most part. Us older people, we kind of do like the defensive games. We grew up in a different era. But what, what the NFL wants now is points on the board. They want games to be 35-28. They want games to be 30-22. to 22. You know, they don't want the 17-14 the to 14 games because it doesn't attract people. People want to see scoring, and I think this is a rule that's – you're going to have some teams that figure it out very quickly, and it's going to benefit them. You're going to have some teams that fall behind, and it's going to hurt them. So that those special team coaches or head coaches that figure out what to do and how to do it, it's definitely going to benefit your team. If you don't figure it out, it's going to hurt you. Paul, what you think? Well, first thing I thought about, I wasn't too sure on the kickoff, but when I seen what it was doing, how it's going to be done, to me, I think it's going to they're bringing more action to the game. Um, I don't know exactly how it works 100%, but I think they're trying to bring more action to the game instead of this, you know, basically just starting off at a 25-yard line every time or whatever, you know, because that's all we did all last year. <laughs> the last couple you know? seasons, actually. Yeah. Um, I think that's what they're trying to do with that is just trying to get more action in the game. So, I mean, with that being said, not, I agree. Yeah, they want more action in the game and everything. But the uh, the key thing, that was the minor question. The major question is to tackle or not to tackle? How do you tackle in 2024? Because I know this for a fact, and I feel bad for all sides of the game. How do you tackle any person that has a live football now without sitting, getting there, getting a 15-yard penalty and or and or depending on the detrimental or, or how bad things are going to get, how is, this, how is this going to affect the game? So if you do this new rule change and if you do this tackle, is it going to be a 15-yard penalty? Is it going to be a one or two before you get uh, ejected from the game? I mean, what, what you know, what, what are they doing? Like, because I'm to a point right now, and this is just me personally, make the quarterback red shirt put flags on the players, and everybody does a two-hand touch. Because that's exactly where we're going at, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it, it's sad. Like, I, don't get me wrong. They are human beings. You want to keep them safe. They have families. I get it. But at the end of the day, how do you tackle now? Do you just run through the player now and just put your arms out by running through them? Like, what do you do? Well... The, the way I see things is, yeah, there's going to be a lot more hits like we used to see. Um, I mean, we're going to be seeing people get laid out more. Um, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, we'll have to wait and see. You know, right, John? We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, 
it's that's how I see the tackling because I mean the the hip tackle is how ninety percent of the tackles were done really. Um because of all the other things being banned or outlawed or whatever you want to say. Um, I just see him laying people out with this, with this now with banning the hip tackle. My thing is, my thing is this, I look, I, I already can't stand all the, the new penalties. Every time you turn around, there's an injury and it's a dangerous game. And, you know, there are reasons why we see more injuries. And I would just say that, you know, preliminarily to discuss this topic, I heard, I read an article recently, uh, you know, specifically uh, discussing why is it that we are seeing so many season ending catastrophic, you know, leg injuries in the league where it seems like 20, 30, 40 years ago, we weren't seeing as many. And the reason, as far as I could tell, you know, through sports science, actual biologists and guys that studied anatomy was, you know, the players are getting much faster, much stronger, much bigger. But knee ligaments in human beings and leg ligaments in human beings can only get so big via nutrition, via working out. So while we're maximizing other parts of the human body and we are maximizing speed and strength, we are putting immense pressure on ligaments that cannot be strengthened anymore and cannot grow any bigger. So, you know, naturally coming out of that, ligaments are going to snap more often because they can't. It's like a load bearing. We're talking about infrastructure in the, in the backstage. It's like a lo load bearing, you know, pillar or a, a nut or a bolt. You can continue to stack things on it, put more load on it. But if that particular bolt cannot withstand it, it will eventually snap. I, now, that's a segue into. You cannot litigate, you cannot rule change your way out of some of the issues that we're facing with catastrophic injuries. And here's my thing overall. The NFL, because John, I, you know, I want to reference what you said very recently, and I totally agree. I remember a football you know, game, and even when I'm at college games now, and I'm in the crowd, and it's cold, and there's a defensive struggle going on where every down means something and you're rooting for the defense, the, the loudness of that stadium when you're getting sack after sack or stuffing the run is just as exciting and is the essence of the game, which is a game of momentum and inches, we forget, you know, as these offensive fireworks. And I think the NFL has gotten itself over the last 20 years on this runaway train that they can't get off of now where they've emphasized the passing game quarterbacks and wide receivers and skill positions so much that if your quarterback goes down, your season is essentially over. If your star receiver goes down, your season is close to virtually over. But that's the NFL's own fault for putting so much emphasis on these singular players, sinking so much salary into them that you can't get out of it. And when these players get hurt, the team's in trouble. The product suffers. Well, here's the thing. Now they want to find a way to get out of these injuries by over rule changing these injuries, which is what got us into the position where these skill players are too emphasized as it is. Here's my thing. You're already pissing me off by going down this road and continually limiting the game and making it softer. But what gets me even more upset is if you're going to litigate it, litigate it entirely. Meaning you want to get rid of a, of a drop hip drop tackle, get rid of it categorically. No, they're saying, with some science guy up in front of 32 owners who haven't played the game in years or never played the game, these investor class guys who don't understand the nature of the game at a fundamental baseline level, he's trying to explain the nuance and the ultra complex, you know, minutia of why they're not banning a hip drop tackle categorically. They're simply banning the swivel hip drop tackle. Here's why I hate that even more than just banning it. Now the referees and the players and everybody on that field in this split second game is going to be sitting there making calls that are going to be arbitrary when compared to calls in other games and even the same game. And these calls, you're going to have an excellent, I'm telling you, and you guys already know it because it's already happening now with roughing the passer. You're going to have an excellent defensive play that stops a player on defense and ends the game. And it's going to be negated or ends the quarter or ends the drive. It's going to be negated 
by a questionable arbitrary call because the minutia of these rules is difficult for the players to under, to, to abide by in split seconds. And it's also difficult for the referees to be able to ascertain and make those complex judgments in a short period of time. It's too damn hard. So I hate it because it allows for more, you know, you could say abuse, you could say lack of judgment, whatever, from the officials. It's further complicating and ruining the game because of those issues, and it infuriates me. I, I totally agree with that, Larry, and, and one of the problems that I have with this rule is w when a guy is running full speed to make a tackle and, and the, the offensive player cuts and he reaches out to grab and his hips are already going that way, how are you going to call a penalty on him? His, his inertia took him that way. He can't just stop, turn, and then start running again so he doesn't swivel around. If he's running side by side and reaches and jumps on him and swivels the hips, I get it. The other problem I have with this is if they're going to have to stop the clock to go look at the video to see whether it was a swivel hip tackle, now you're extending the game. It, you know, it, the game's already three hours long. If, it, if it's, you know, a lot of passing, maybe it's three hours, 15 minutes, 320. Now you're looking at a three and a three and a half, three hour and 45 minute game because they got to keep stopping and go and look at videos to make sure they get it right. Mm -hmm. It's also going to cause head coaches problems because if they think it was a swivel tackle and the guy upstairs is calling down to him, hey, challenge that. He did swivel his hips. They're throwing out a red flag. You're stopping again. Now let's go look at it because they either didn't call it or they did call it. Now they got to go look at it, review it. You're just extending the time of the game and – you know, people that are sitting at home watching their favorite team have already committed the time. Now, all of a sudden, the game's going longer. Oh, I can't go to dinner. I got to, or I got to miss the end of the game. You know, if you're in the stands, fine. The time doesn't seem like it's that long anyway because, I, you know, I, I don't know about you. I go to a lot of games when I'm there. It doesn't seem to take nearly as much time as when I'm sitting in front of my TV. True. But, no, TV is, is the worst when you're sitting at the commercials. At least at the game, you can see what's going on. It kind of, it kind of, you know, I don't know what it is because you're watching what's going on. It doesn't, you're not as ridiculous. Man, man. commercials are the best thing forever, man. You got to go to the bathroom. You want to oh, go to the no, yeah. when, you, when you're at home. But when yeah, you're in the stadium, you know, you're talking to your friends, you're yeah. high-fiving, you're having a good That's time, really and the time good. just doesn't, the game's over, and you're like, damn, that was three hours already? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, agree, I, I agree with everybody, though. I mean, I think, you know, I mean, especially the winners, I mean, flag football, I mean, you're not getting too far from it. I mean, you're limiting so much of the game. And to jo to John's point, I mean, the game's going to take so much longer now because, I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to, I guess, regulate this, I mean, they're going to have to look at every single tackle if they think it's that. And it's, it's just going to get out of hand. There's and another my thing other, is, yeah, go ahead, John. My, uh, my other thought with this was when I first heard of it, and they were saying that they wanted to do this to prevent injuries. And my first thought, and it was later tweeted by some players and stuff, was get rid of turf. Turf is a big thing when it comes to Achilles, knees, ankles. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But yet they're still playing on turf. Mm -hmm. So I, I get protecting the players, but if you're going to protect them, do it 100%, not 50%, not 80%. Do it 100 Get rid of turf. I lived 40 minutes from MetLife Stadium. You're telling me you cannot bring new grass in and put it in there? <laughs> Oh, they don't want to spend the money. It's not cost effective. You're making millions upon millions of dollars. You can put new grass in there every few weeks. 100%. And it's funny, it's John, because I can, I can tell by the t type of guy you are. We live in the same area. I was going to say, where the hell where are you coming from? Because I'm looking at like the Meadowlands right now from Newark, from my apartment. So. I, I, li I live in Kingsburg, New Jersey. Oh, that, I figured I'm from I'm from down that way in, in uh, Freehold. So. Yeah, you're um, just, I was just with some Keensburg guys at a bachelor party in AC this weekend. So yeah, anyway, mom, I, I can tell by you the way you're talking. So <laughs> well, I'm originally from Connecticut, but I've been in Keen I've been in New Jersey since '89. So yeah, so <laughs> you're basically Jersey now, man. But but no, I agree with the turf situation. There's there's grass surfaces in our state and other states that they can take care of. They can absolutely golf courses. I mean, come on, they can do it. They don't feel like doing it. And one thing is too, you want to you know how much can you regulate bringing a guy down? The game is you got to get a guy down on the ground. I understand you can't do lower your helmet and spear into his head. I understand not crawling on the ground and trying purposely to take his knee out. Other than that, you're bringing a guy down. They're heavily padded up. Injuries are going to happen 
How much can you regulate the minutia of the method it takes to bring a guy down? Like you can grab if remember, like the, the rules were if the hair was sticking out of the of the helmet, you can pull it. You can pull a t-shirt. You can because you're trying to get the guy on the ground any way you can. I just think we're going way too far down the rabbit hole when we're yep. trying to regulate every little minutia. And now yeah. the minutia of the minutia with the hip swivel. It's just going down a road that's going to create so much controversy and nonsense. I remember when they tried to regulate and allow challenges for pass interference. It seemed like a good idea because the, the missed call seemed egregious in the NFC Championship game. I get that. But those are judgment calls. Different games are called different ways. And that was a disaster, and they got rid of that. I have a feeling this may be a disaster because it's so hard to regulate such a nuanced minutia. I just don't understand how they're going to be able to do it. And well, I, I just know we're going to be pissed. They're just setting the lead back, in my opinion, because, I mean, if you're going to go and you're going to do this, and then if it goes wrong and you're going to try to change it back, it's just going to cause even more uproar that we have, than we have right now because I know a lot of people that are pissed about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, especially, especially defensive players in the NFL. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I saw, they, I, I saw it from maybe – maybe it was Holland maybe I think he posted Oh, yeah, it. Holland. Yeah. Well, Holland, um, J.J. Watt, even though he's not playing anymore, he, he basically said bring out the flags – Yep. You might as well. I mean, that's what it's going to. I mean, you you see. I mean, you see. They've already done the Pro Bowl, which Pro Bowl don't mean much, but still. I mean, they, I mean, they're just they're just they're going backwards. What else is well, John just brings up a point. Jason just brings up a point. I want to point out. Speaking of what you just said, I mean, look, the hip drop tackle from what I and the swivel hip drop from what I saw, they were trying to, you know, placate us by saying, you know what, it doesn't even happen that much. It happens like once or twice a game. Well, here's my thing. If it happens once or twice a game and you're trying to say it's not going to make that much of an impact, why are you getting rid of something that only happens once or twice a game and now making it such a pivotal you know, issue and call if it's not even that prevalent? I mean, what are we doing? Well, the, re- the reason they're trying to get rid of the hip swivel is that's the one that blows out knees and ankles because guys' legs get tied up underneath the guy that's coming down on them. Right. So that, that that's the big premise on this one is – especially, you know, the knees, the ankles, the Achilles, these are where these injuries come from because you're swinging your body around the guy as you're bringing him down. His legs get tangled up. He can't move. You're falling on top of him. So, I mean, I get the protection part of the players, but there's so many other things in the NFL, the turf. Um, The one I laugh about all the time because, you know, listen, I watch NFL constantly when it's on. If I'm home, it goes on the first game and it doesn't go off till the Mm -hmm. last game is off. What do you see all these players doing after they score and stuff? They're smacking each other in the head. They're headbutting each other. Well, eliminate that. You want to talk about brain injuries and impacts? Stop <laughs> smacking each other on the head. Stop headbutting each other. That's right. a part of the game, though. That's a part of the game. So yeah, I, mean, I mean, that's the celebration part. But you're still right. smacking a guy in the head. Yes, he's wearing a helmet. But when fifty guys in a row smack him in the head, or three guys headbutt him. Listen, get rid of all that. You want to protect them, protect them 100%, not just 50 or 80%. Do it 100%. Keep your hands off their helmets. Stop headbutting each other. Don't headbutt the wall. Don't, you know, throw your helmet at anybody. Do it all the way or don't do it at all. I hear you, Paul. Paul, How many non-contact winters? How many non-contact injuries guys blow out their knees, blow out their Achilles? Look at Phillips. I mean, there's plenty of non-contact. So and and John, to your point before, if if a guy's momentum is going one way, it just seems like using a cannonball to tackle something that's a twenty-two caliber problem, and I just don't get it. You know? No, I agree. Chubb Chubb was a non-contact non-contact injury in, in Baltimore. He he stopped, tried to cut, and blew his knee out. Yeah, hundred yep. percent. Yeah, Paul, what's your what's your, what's your thoughts on it, Paul? On what the tackling? Yeah. I'm just like I said earlier. It's there. We might as well just stick your arm out and start clotheslining everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. I mean, let's take it back to the '70s. Do the hel- helicopter spin tackles and all that. that you ever watch those '70s cool. highlights, man? It was wild. Dude, I remember. Yeah. I remember, yeah. Well, I mean, mean, mean Joe Green, you know, just throwing his arm out, hitting him in the, in the neck of that face mask, and putting him on the ground. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's. I mean, just they're going to start laying them out, you know. When they're, they're good, we can't t- we can't grab hold of them and roll with them. We're going to just start laying them out. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah, as long ladies as your head is up and you don't dip your head, you're good. Yep, ladies and gentlemen, please hit that like button. Please hit the like button. We'll be dropping the link in a minute. My younger brother wants to hop on too. So that's why I said we'll be dropping the link in a little bit. Smash the link and subscribe to the channel, fellas, everybody. Definitely. I want to thank to the 181 people and counting that are watching right now. Appreciate you guys. And thanks for taking the time out to watch us this evening. But, um, yeah, we'll yeah, be dropping so we, that next So we had a couple of the people in Jersey that are, uh, were putting in comments in there. Mm -hmm, I saw that. All the well, where they're from and everything else. Yeah. Right. The there you go. Yeah. We, got, yeah. we got PA, Jersey, all, all up in this uh, channel, man. It's pretty yes, dope. Sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. But yeah, it's it's a mess, gentlemen. It really is. It really well, is. At the end of the day, it's just a whole mess. <laughs> I mean, I'm not I'm not sure I'm willing to call it a mess, but, I, you know, it's going to take some getting used to. I think early in the season, you're going to see these flags flying for these things and they're going to be running over to the monitor and check. Did he swivel his hips? Did he not? You know, the, the, the refs are going to be on a learning curve, just like the coaches and the players. Right. It's I mean it's 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 like you said, John. The time is going to get out of hand on the games. You're yes. going to have the one o'clock games. You're going to be running into the four o'clock games, and it's going to be a mess. Hey, no, you know what? That may be the NFL's plan. Maybe that's their plan, so they can, you know, take up more of your time on a Sunday and have more football on. And that maybe the one o'clock, <laughs> maybe the one o'clock games are going to go to twelve thirty, so the other ones start at four thirty. Yep. More game, more games in on the days, and you can expand it to more Saturday games and on a Friday. Well, you already heard the rumor the uh, the opener is supposed to be on a Friday. I saw that. I saw that. They keep doing that, and you know, part of me loves different, you know, football content as often as I can get it. But I got to be honest with you, you know, part of the Sundays it's almost a national holiday with all the games going on and all the hype, yep. and you know, the fantasy. Absolutely. It makes it fun. You spread it well, out too much, I kind of lose track of it. The way I lose track of other sports, so I keep don't go too far with the spreading it out, in my opinion. And then the yeah. scheduling but, problem. Listen, they're going to keep well, spreading it out. You know why? The almighty dollar. They're making more why. and more money. They're getting yeah. more streaming services involved that are paying for it. You then have to pay for a streaming service to have it. It. it yeah. They're talking two games on Christmas. Christmas is on a Wednesday. Yeah. How are you doing two games on Christmas Day when it's on a Wednesday? It's crazy. Yeah. I, I just I, I don't mind the Saturday Sunday and I I really don't mind like the Sunday Sunday Monday Thursday I don't but when they spread it like you said to Friday and you're getting a game on Wednesday Sunday's gonna feel bare with all the games you're yeah like, I mean, man I mean, yes I, I I like the sun I love Sundays because it's football all day long I get it from I mean the afternoon on all the way before I go to bed yes. all day long I love it but when they well, when they spread it thin I hate it. I well, agree. It's like, it's like John and, growing up. You know, they're going to be having two games on Christmas this year on a Wednesday. Yep. That's yeah, and think about, think about this. If they have to keep going to the monitor to check these tackles, guess what? They're going to commercial. They're getting paid more because advertisements. Yeah, no, that's so what that, it is. That, yeah. That's a fair point. That is a really good point. So now the NFL is bringing in even more money. So now with all of this, and if they're bringing in more money, watch the salary cap next year. It's going to go up another forty million instead of twenty twenty five because they're bringing in so much money. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's all about the dollar, and that's why, like you know, people get hyped about the games with the streaming services. Yeah, some of the streaming services I already have. Some of them, it's only three bucks. But you know what? I'm getting tired of getting taxed for everything I do. Meaning, like, <laughs> oh, now I got to subscribe to this whole new service. You already charge me in ridiculous amounts of money to to park at a game. You charge me absurd amount of money for a ticket. You charge me an arm and a leg for concessions. And by the way, not the Dolphins, but a lot of other teams. Look at Buffalo. You want the public to pay for the, the facilities in the arena, but you're raking in all the money on those fees and those corporate seats. Mm -hmm. But the taxpayers are footing the bill. If the taxpayers are footing the bill, the taxpayers should have much easier access to the facilities. That's my soapbox, but it, I get they're chasing the money, and I understand it, but sometimes I get fed up with it because these ROI, return on investment owners, and this new investor class of ownership, you know, the product matters to us too, especially the old school football fan who likes real football. It gets, it gets, it, I don't know that. I guess that coupled with everything else going on in the world and and this society just gets to me. You know, like let me have my Sunday football and leave it alone, huh? I I agree with you, Larry. I mean, been watching football fifty plus years, and the changes you've seen over the time is bad enough. But now it's like I just 
I like my Sunday football, like Ethan said. I just want to sit down and watch Sunday football. Mm -hmm. I don't want to yeah, worry about, well, are we playing Monday night? Are we playing Thursday night? Are we playing Saturday? What? When are we playing this week, you know? Hey, try, try having to buy tickets to fly down there every weekend when we play at home. No well, espe especially, especially if they flex it. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes, they flex. Yeah, because, Some guys really struggled with the flex this year. When we, I forget when we did it, but it was like a night game. Guys have work in the morning, and it's fine if you, if we know ahead of time. But if you don't, it's all about the TV money, though. That's what it is. They don't care about yeah. the fans in the stadium. No, they, they don't care about the fans. It's Listen, the dollar. it's all about the dollar now. The NFL is nothing but the money. Yeah, they're they're producing. They have been. They've been on. If you go back and look at it, the NFL is, has nothing but risen. From the nineteen late sixties when they when they invented the Super Bowl and Super Bowl three, it's been the money has just been going astronomical. The seventies wasn't so much. The eighties started to get much bigger. The nineties got huge. The early two thousands, it took a huge jump, and it's just been going since. It's entertainment. Yes. Yep. Yep. Well, the other and thing is too. I think football is one of the unique sports where I mean, I look. There's some people that watch any game of any sport they can find. I, I used to be that guy. I'm not that guy much anymore. I'm too busy. I follow my team in hockey. I follow my team in, in college, and, and that's it. But football, I'll watch any game, John, like you said. Any game of football, if it's on, I will watch it. I know the players. I know the coaches. Even if we lose, it used to be I couldn't watch the rest of the day. I can watch the other games. So give me yeah. my Sunday because I'm going to enjoy watching all of those games, and I have off, and it's a day of rest. Let me chill and watch these games. Give me Monday. I like Monday. It makes the week easier. It's traditional now for, for 50 years. But don't spread it too much. You're taking away my Sundays. You're taking away even some Mondays. And you could stack Mondays for all I care instead of spreading it out too much. And by the way, some of these other sports got to breathe. I might want to go to a hockey game on a Friday night. I might have a, a family thing on a Friday night. And now I don't know if I could make it. And, you know, family knows to give us. Sundays, girlfriend knows, give me Sundays, but you start spreading all these weeks. All of a sudden it's like, Hey, I thought I left you Sundays. I'm just, it's, it's a minor complaint, but as somebody who's also a college season ticket holder, I'm in Saturdays, I'm at college games. I don't know. You know, it, it's okay to spread it a little, especially around the holidays. I remember when they used to do Thursday, when it first started, it was only like Thanksgiving on like, because the games were important. So they would put games on Thursday night. I thought that was almost like a treat. Kind of like a holiday. If it's Christmas every weekend, Christmas isn't important anymore. It was cool when it was like a Thursday every now and then at the end of the season. And now it's kind of like I lose track of some of the Thursday games. I got to be honest. Yeah. Thursday's tough, especially since they moved it to prom. I just don't. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah, prime. I yeah. I, I just can't connect with the prom broadcast, man. Like, it's just like sometimes I'm sitting there. I'm like, my God, this is boring. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. Like, we're going to call it like we see it. I mean, what's even better? Prime or Paramount Plus, because I watched the game on Paramount Plus. Yep, so, yep. you know, and it's basically yeah. the feed you get. Sometimes you get the CBS feed on Paramount Plus. But, yeah, um, yeah Amazon Prime, no, it's not good. It's terrible, man. I, I It's it's bad. <clears throat> you know, what's funny, too, is I have Prime for, like, movies and stuff. But if I'm in on Prime, I'm watching whatever I, I pick to watch. If I'm on TV where the games usually are, even you see, if it's on YouTube and I'm out of market, if it's a Dolphins game, that's the other thing. You put things on Sunday and there's a bunch of game stacked. I can flip between games on my YouTube Sunday ticket, which makes it fun. You only some Sundays there were like two, three games at one, and two of them were on TV. I had switching from TV to the app is kind of annoying. So if if you're gonna like on a Friday night or a Thursday night, if it's on the regular TV, I can flip between that and the news or the hockey or whatever. But if you have it on Prime, you're making me. It sounds so silly, and I sound like a first, like a first world problem. But it's it's a pain in the ass to go into the app yeah. and out of the app. I want to be able to either be in the app with all the games or on cable, so I can just flip. I don't want exactly. to just be logged you, out the one. You, app, you can't but. just you can't just flip channels when you got it on different apps and everything. Yeah, you got to go out of this app, go to your screen, go down to this app over here, you know, yeah. and then it all takes time. And by that time, you've done lost four, five, six plays. Kind of kills the vibe, you know what I'm saying, Papa Paul? It kind of kills the vibe for me. It's not Most the same. Most definitely, yes. Yeah. yeah, and you got some of the people in here comment, Friday nights is high school football, yeah. Saturday is college football. You want to be watching those. J Jason made a good point, and I had thought about it, but I didn't say it. But um, 
you know, what if on a Sunday your team played on Friday, now you go to watch Sunday football and you go to one o'clock game and there's three games and they all suck. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Then what are you gonna do? Sit there. I'm like, because I'm not gonna watch games that suck. I'm, yes. just, I'm I'm gonna watch them, but now I'm definitely gonna be flipping between them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not yeah. just gonna watch one game. You know, you got two two bottom feeders playing, and you're like, well, that game sucks. Let me see. Well, this is a really good team against the crappy team. That's gonna be a blowout. You watch it till it gets to seventeen nothing, twenty one nothing, and you, you're flipping off for that because you know it's just not a good game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, want to welcome. Go ahead. You want to welcome him, Paul? There you go. Say, let's w- welcome Eric Winters to the screen. My what's younger brother. Eric? Eric? What's, up? what's up? What's up, brother? How you doing today, man? What's even going if, on, fellas? How y'all even, if, even if he is an a a, a dead eagle. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Here you go. You taking shots again? Okay, okay, okay. I got it. Ooh. I know where I'm at. <laughs> you, you, you know where you're at. You know you're loved. Yeah, you, I got no issues. Your collapse was worse than ours. Yeah, you ain't lying. Um, <laughs> <A> joke. <laughs> uh, no, you guys were talking about some pivot points, and I, I, I'm not even gonna lie. I had, I was like, yo, somebody send me the link. I got to jump in here because Larry was on the road, but I said, no, I got to add to it. And the mm-hmm. reason why I got to add to it, I'm blaming all you old guys. And the reason why I'm blaming all you guys. Stop, stop. You are not. No, I got to. I'm blaming all of y'all. You might be my younger brother, but you're 40 what? I'm on 41. Okay. All right. All right. So but you I'm not, but listen to the reason okay. why I'm blaming you guys. <laughs> the reason why I'm blaming you guys is because you 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 guys wanted more football. You craved it, right? It's almost fanatic. Like now that we finally got it, it's oversaturation. I don't know who decided to make turn it turn it up the way that they did, but it happened. No. And now we like, oh well, we didn't want that much food on our plate. <laughs> no, like, no, no, come no. on, man. We're, we're we're not complaining about that. Yeah, we liked it. We liked Bring the it seventeen, the sixteen, seventeen, eighteen regular season games true we want it all on basically two days sundays and mondays that's it so yeah. you're not complaining about the 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 the, the quad the like how many is is coming you you're worried about the quality of football that's what you guys are talking about <laughs> that's right. what y'all going more at or with. less yeah the quality yeah. But, and, but that came in with everybody doing this everybody got their hand in the pot including the players they don't even practice anymore. Y'all forgot they to talk about that. Oh, yeah. That causes injuries. So too and that causes right. all the injuries in the world. But then on top of that, these idiots just figured out that they don't have guaranteed contracts. Like in, like the NBA, NFL, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, NBA, NBL, soccer, all those other leagues. They just figured that out in 2024, turning 2025. Yeah. So that's the issue. That's, if y'all want to have an issue with anybody, Talk to them about that that collective uh, bargaining agreement that they put together that they didn't even know how to put together correctly uh, as far as the other leagues. What they should have did was sat down with somebody, other representatives from other leagues to figure out how do you get the the, the guaranteed money for the quality of life after football. Most players, we all know, they're not going to make it past five years. That's if they make it in the first three years. And then on top of that, they they getting their ass cheeks served on a disc during the uh during a they rookie year because they don't know if they're gonna be able to uh afford anything in their first three years. Look at the quarterback we just got from uh from Pittsburgh. They threw him away like what a, a piece a piece of paper. And he was a first round draft pick at that. He just wasn't he wasn't doing what they wanted him to do. That's why he no got, he didn't know he got in his feelings because Russell Wilson got signed for one year and he didn't know how to you know excuse my language shut the fuck up and just take it. <laughs> Let's just keep it 100. Because if he'd have kept his mouth closed, Russell Wilson probably would have went over there, stunk it up, probably did a couple of dances with Sierra, and then been out of there. You already right. know it's true. <laughs> Russell ain't doing anything. I don't know why he's so worried about it. Hey, Pickett would have been starting by week four if he had to just shut up. You know, Russell he would have just shut up. Sometimes, and we, we as, as I'm learning this as a, as a married man, and as, a, you know, I'm getting older. Sometimes he's got to learn how to shut the fuck up. Like, just yeah, shut you, up, you, take it, you, and just go. Not, not, not you, you, not you. Yeah, man, listen. I'm oh, locked in. God. Yes, honey. No, honey. 
What? No, wow. I'm shutting up. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I'm locked unfortunately, in. That's, you know, unfortunately, that's most of us men don't learn that until we're in our 40s. Right? <laughs> but you know what? That's a whole conversation. That's a whole conversation for the phone. So I'm not gonna pick what I'm on here. <laughs> well, well, I, 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 take, I, look, I took my lickings. That's why I don't say nothing when y'all jump on me when I, uh, about the Eagles. Like I was well, all I, hype. I'm, I was on the train. I was on the gravy train, but they had biscuit wheels. I knew it. And I, and I'm, I knew I'm it. gonna get I'm gonna give you a quick lesson, Eric. It's, yes, dear. Then you go do whatever you want to do. <laughs> I am oh, thirty man. and learning that slowly, bro. But I'm getting there because it's making a lot less a lot less stress for me with women and everything else. Like you know, oh what? yeah, all right, bro. Oh, yeah. You say that. I'm not gonna waste my breath. It's just stressing me out, bro. Hell yeah, you I'm got that. Thirty nine right. in a month. Actually, in a couple weeks. So I'm getting there. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna tell you this. Somebody, this old man, pulled me to the side. He said, "You know we." You know, you know, how long you been married? So I told him how long I've been married, which was 17 years. He said, you know we die first, right? <laughs> you do. <laughs> because I we said, want well, to. We do, I said, he said, so learn how to shut up and just take it. <laughs> he said, <laughs> I said, okay, all right, say no more. That's how I learned that. No, but no you guys were right. You, you guys were hitting on a lot of points. But like I said, you, you know, we asked for these things. We got them. It's oversaturation. And then the, then the owners, they just like whatever. Just rake it in. It's, we gonna rake it in. We only giving them pennies on the dollar, so it don't even really matter. As far as the players wise, the the, the collective bargain agreement that they they came up with is trash, and they know it. So what they want to do is try to get to the the back end of it. We're saying, okay, you know what? After the NFL, we don't actually want you to have a pension. They didn't put that in there. You know, everybody know that. So. On the back end, okay, how are we going to get these guys to take care of themselves? Because they sure as hell don't know how to take care of themselves when we put the money in front of them. Name a player that came into the league that was financially, that have had a financial understanding of what they're supposed to do with their money. None of them. That's why they all go get somebody to take care of their money. Then they end up like T.O. No, like well, I, they good, do good. have... They do have the, the the classes, the clinics, when the rookies come in and they do talk to them. But you're talking to a young man who you're just handing a pay. A I was just about to, to say that. Now you know damn well somebody that gave you what two, one point two million dollars at nineteen years old. Who the hell are you gonna listen to? Well, and then you won't well, get the money out. Well, well real quick, I I want to welcome Greg to the platform. What's up, what's Greg? up Greg? What up, Greg? Yo, what's up? Hey, what up? I'm not here to hijack. I just wanted to just get my little nah, two bro. cents off. Man, you, you didn't just go away. No, you're, 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 you're good. good. You're good. Shake. You know, what's up, Shake? How you doing? Shake money, G. Look at this. What's going on? Real, I know real, this Larry guy. He's, he yeah, looks familiar. <laughs> you, know, um, <laughs> you know, real quick, you talk about they're signing players $1.2 million for a one-year contract and everything. I was looking at it today. I said, "Hell, I'll go to the practice squad for twelve thousand dollars a week." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but oh, mean, yeah. meantime, you forgot that you got to pay taxes on whatever state that you in. You better pray we're, you in Florida. We are. I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, man. Hey, by the way, um, my man Dolphins Thirsty is gonna be in the blender tomorrow. I'll nice. be watching. Well, yeah, tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah, that it. snuck up, bro. That's good. That snuck up. But look, I want to let y'all know I'm about to get off here. I just had to get my little two cents off. Man, I love y'all show. I love what y'all doing. And just well, keep it keep it funky. Listen, I'm even going. I ain't doing that shit. Eric, if you're close, still bro. listening to me, like that's cute. I'm gonna get him. Don't worry about it. I just feel bad. Yeah, I, I think I even I even have a I, I even have his little water I even have a little water that fucking rude to drink it all. Like uh, Greg, water, what, how, do you, how do you feel about um the, the issue that we're talking about, Greg? Yeah, well, I came up because I wanted to talk about the new kickoff group, but I'll touch on the uh uh the hip tap dragon band. I okay. mean at this rate. We're at what are we? What is the defender supposed to do at this rate? You're just gonna, like JJ Watts said it best. Put these boys in flags. I mean, it's getting to that point. It's ridiculous, you know. And the referees now have more on their jobs. They already, they already gotta decide what what roughing the passer is. 
They got to decide what pass interference now. And we all seen the BS calls these referees made. You're adding another thing, another controversial call. The NFL is already getting called rig out here. And now you're adding another controversial call on top of it. It's ridiculous. It's sad. I, I, I don't understand it. At this rate, we're going to get penalties. This is going to turn into like the USFL, the XFL, where they're taking – I mean, if they're going to make the reviewable thing, that they're going to have to reveal every penalty, because that's the, that's what we're getting to, they got to speed it up. They got to make it quicker like they did in the XFL and the USFL. But I wanted to touch on the kickoff rule, and I don't know why some people are hating on this new kickoff rule. This is a great addition. I love the kickoff rule. Not only is it much safer for the players – but it's more interesting. It's more strategy. Every time you watch an NFL game, about 75% of the time, the ball goes out of the back of the end zone, and everyone's crying about the surprise on kick being gone. Let me tell you something. These coaches don't have the balls anymore to do an onside kick. And, and, and meanwhile, I get it. It's a one-year trial. We'll see how it works. But the one thing they should have added is the fourth in 20 rule as a one-year trial. The onside kick is already a dead play. It's the, one of the worst plays in NFL. Granted, half the time these guys don't recover. There's like a like a what a 0.5 percent chance they ever recover it. They should have done the fourth and twenty as a one year trial too. Would you rather have the ball in the hands of your kicker or your quarterback? I think the kickoff rule is going to be great. I think it's going to be here to stay. I wish they would have done the fourth and twenty two fourth and twenty rule as well as a one year trial. Well, I, I got a quick question on this because I don't know the whole rule of the kickoff. Why? I mean, what's the difference of them kicking off out of the end zone like they have been? I think they're wanting more offense, like John was saying earlier. I yeah. think they're wanting to produce more offense. But what I'm saying, play. if, if they're ki- been kicking it out of the end zone, why are they going to stop? Well, now they're going to get penalized for because the ball will go out of the 35 now. Yeah, the ball comes out to the thirty-five. That's what I didn't. That's what I didn't understand. Yeah, if it if it goes through the end zone, the ball comes out to the thirty-five. But you're also now, if you do kick it short in the end zone, you're giving your guy a chance to return it because nobody can move until he actually catches the ball, which gives him wide open field in front of him for the first twenty twenty-five yards. It's yeah, kind of interesting. Yeah, like I think it. I, 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 I yeah, I, I think it's interesting. I could see us. Putting like a-, a Chan out there or some of the other speedsters out there. And I, I really think I really think Barrios is going to see with this. I, I do. I think I think I, this I, is gonna yeah, a lot. It's going to yeah, give Barrios. him a chance to to run that kickoff return, which he never had really the last year. Right. Does anybody know that they're still kicking off from the same place, or are they going back I to think where they used it, to? They have a chart. I I, I did it my episode <laughs> on my sports podcast. About it, I pull up the picture. They're gonna be. At, I, I I don't have the picture on me, but if you go, to I Twitter, want. I want to say they're moving it back five yards from where it yeah, was. I, I, I believe that's good, go, and then there's more chance to put it in play. And I think it's interesting. Absolutely, right. well, that, that's what Twitter, they want. They like you it. said earlier, they want more action, so it's giving them a little more action. The guys are only ten yards apart that are blocking each other, so they don't have full speed running at each other and hitting each other. Yeah, right. You know, the only one that might have full speed is the returner. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I like it. I, 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 I well, and we that, all we all say we like it until we find out that our special teams coach doesn't understand what's going on, and we're giving. Well, up we already know that. Why is we're giving up? Uh, and we're giving up kickoff returns. Yeah, we know that's the case let, for let, our guy. Yeah, Larry, I brought that up. For, I've been bringing that up since the end of the season. Is why is he still here, dude? You know what it is, Papa Paul. I think, and it's. I'm not going to go on, you know, crazy tirade, but this franchise consistently likes to gaslight us no matter what the situation is. If we know there's a glaring problem, they just tell us, no, no, no. In fact, we're going to triple down just to prove that you're wrong. He's fine. Crossman's great. We got no problems there. Just like, hey, we're going to revamp the entire defense, but the offense, you know, we'll bring in a guy or two. We'll let some guys, well, we're good. Like they just, they refuse to address glaring issues some of the best assistant coaches. I understand you got to you got to turn over on the defensive side of the ball with the new administration. You're going to have to have guys go. I get it, but some of the better coaches are gone on that side of the ball. But we have this guy still with a job. I just don't get it. I, I it's the stubbornness no. yes. drives me nuts. Yes. Well, I mean, hey, listen, he's been there how many years? Yeah, been yeah. I, I have two theories. Number one, uh, as far as the as far as the kickoff is concerned, right? 
Let me go. This guy's looking up. He's got if, notes. If you if you if your team if you were if you, you're worried about kickoff returns, then your team sucks. Point blank. At the end of the day, I think it's a small margin. Uh, a kickoff or, or it's gonna it's gonna dictate it, uh, uh, the the outcome of the game, in my opinion. And secondly, I think one of the reasons why Crossman is still on this team is because he plays ball. Um, uh, you know, the Vangio wanted to beat, you know, march the beat of his own drum. He wanted in charge of the defense. He wanted to to run his way. But Crossman, he's playing ball. He's he's doing what is told of him. So he's like, you know what? This guy's playing ball. He's doing what he's told to do. Uh, we'll we'll keep him because we could control him. That's Joe, tough, yeah, that's tough if that's the case. I believe he's a yes too, man. I just don't like it. He, he could be a yes man. I mean, you know. I don't know what he's saying he, yes to. He ain't been doing saying doing anything practical. <laughs> well, I mean, day, how, how much how much special teams really cost? To, I mean, one game. Us. Us. That, yeah, yeah, one get a return to the fifty yard line on a pivotal defensive oh. drive. It's going to uh, kill you again. I watch other NFL games. The amount of times a game comes down to an onside kick, and it's the most boring to play in all of the sports. This is going to create some strategy. I'm here for it. It's pro. I can't wait to see what happens this year. I'm excited for it. More strategy, the better. The surprise on onside kick has been dead for years. These coaches have no balls to do it. Every time I'm like, ooh, maybe we get a surprise on kick. What happens? Ball goes to the back of the end zone. This is going to create more strategy, more excitement, and bring relevance and life to the kickoff now. I'm excited for it. Maybe we'll get kickoff returns a lot this year. Well, who knows what's going to happen? I'm very excited to see what happens. Yeah, don't forget uh, when we beat the Jets on two kickoff returns from uh, Ted yeah. Ginn. Yeah. I, I, I tend to I tend to agree with you, Greg. And and part of the reason that the onside kick is dead is, is rule changes over the years. Right. You have to have five guys at each side. You can't have, you know, a stacked side. You, you know, the ball has to go to 10 yards. I, I think the – this year in the NFL, and I'm not exactly sure, but the recovery rate was like 2% or 3%. So, no, coaches don't have the balls to call it because they all have that analytical guy who's who runs the numbers that's in their ear saying, no, don't do it. it, it the, the benefits don't outweigh the negatives. The negatives outweigh the, the benefits, so don't bother doing it because – all these coaches now use all their analytical guys, their stat guys. They they review all this stuff, and, and they're telling them this is, you know, here and there. So a lot of these coaches now coach to what the stats say. Yes, they do. Yeah, everything's analytics. Yes. So they're I, not going to do a surprise point, onside kick. Yeah. Gee, they got to announce when they're doing an onside, I read. So yeah, they might still be able to do it better, but they're going to have to announce it. So I don't think you could do a surprise. That's I'm not why sure. I said they should have did a fourth and 20 test trial this year because I guarantee you there's going to be a game or there's been a couple of games in the NFL that they're, they're come down, that they're down 10 plus points. They get the field goal and now they need an onside kick. It's ridiculous. At this rate, I, I, I get it. Kickers are going to be a position. We can't hate on our kickers. we got to respect our kickers. I can't go out there and kick a 65-yard field goal or a 60-yarder or a 55-yarder. I can't kick a two-yarder. But you rather, in a clutch moment, i rather have two attack by low. <laughs> I'd rather the ball be in his hands than the Jason Sanders' hands. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, I do, I do as well. I agree, and and that fourth and twenty rule could be coming up shortly. We could be talking about this time, this time next year. We could be talking about that. Yeah, I mean, you never fourth know. Well, <laughs> you, you, you What's know, the fourth like, and twenty rule? Tell me. So you have so if you're down, let's say a field goal, you need a touchdown or a field goal to send the game in overtime. You have one play at your own like twenty five, I believe it is. I don't know what it is. Twenty five, thirty five. You have to get the 20 yards. You get the first down. You keep the drive going. If you fail, the other team gets the ball right there. Wow. So what, like almost like instead of an onside kick, I guess? Yes. Yeah. That's cool. I, I think that's, I, I like that's that awesome. Alone. Give people like a chance since we don't have onside kicks yeah. anymore. Yeah, but so the you, thing you, about you, it is, the thing about it is, the thing they hate about it is, all, you, all, all we need is a, a ticky-tacky uh, automatic yeah. first down. Oh, well, then, that's it, also true, then, yeah. then, then, then that, that comes into the reviewing the penalties thing. If they're going to do that, if we're reviewing penalties, I don't know if that's where they're going to go. But then you're going to have to implement reviewing penalties or just make it a five-yard penalty or something. I don't know. I mean, 
I well, get the point, Shay. That's a great point, but you know, I don't know what they, that's something they got to figure out. Thank God I don't get paid to figure that out. <laughs> Maybe you should, though. I don't know. You might figure some better stuff out than some of these guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, well I, 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 I tell you, in um, one of the things I see, seen that was posted earlier in the comments, you know, they're talking about trying to reduce injuries. Well, why can't we just up the roster to like a 63 or 65 man roster? I've been saying that since they went to 17 games. Expand the roster and still give them the, the 10 or 12 guys on the practice squad. Yeah. I mean, you 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 start camp with 100 guys. You're cutting down to 53 and, and what is it, 10 on the practice squad? Why not just cut it down to 63 and 10 on the practice squad? Q became a member, bro. Salute to you, Thank my you, brother. Thank you, Q. Thank you, Q, for being a member. Salute. Thank you, Q. You know, they, I've been saying it. You know, they're going to make the season more regular season games. You got to expand the roster. Yeah. Well, so what? It's still at fifty-two, right? It's stagnant. No, at 50, fifty-five. No, fifty-five. Fifty-five. Now, what they got more inactives than they used to? Is that it? Or yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. You have to have a certain amount of inactive, and you have your third-string quarterback who is doesn't count against the roster as an emergency. Yes. Yes. You know, but it well, just that, it, yeah, yeah it's, it's a fifty-three-man roster. You right. have two that are inactive but are there. Yep. And, you know, they have that change with the whole third quarterback thing, um, again, where he can, he's not going to count against the roster. He's, but, but he can be on the practice play. squad. He can be on the practice squad and inactive, and he can be there and stuff. But – he can only play if both quarterbacks go down. And also, though, being on the practice squad, you take a chance of losing them, too, to another team. Yeah, they really do need to expand the roster. They do. They do. I agree. The especially because, guys that hurt. especially hey. because you know they're going to be going to 18 games soon. Yeah, they are. If, not, if not expand the roster, at least do it like a, a – a, 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 um, a double A team or something like that. A G you no, know, and I, I just wanted to elaborate. I practice the four twenty fourth and twenty rule every day, so I just wanted to say. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <that>. <laughs> hey, y'all! I gotta get out of here. I got class in the morning. But thanks for having me on tonight. Oh, yeah, brother. Ethan, you're, you're, Ethan, you're Ethan, good, brother. good to hear you, brother. Nice Peace talking to you, my bro. Up. You're all, you're always always welcome, up, brother. You know you're part of the, you're part of the original team, brother. Peace yes, love, up, family. Peace love, fins up, Ethan. Hey, where, where's Tom tonight? I don't know. You know, Tom's always busy, dude. He just yeah, had a video I, one, I think, the other day. Yesterday. I talked to him yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah, that dude's Her always busy. And Miss Pam, she's probably busy also as well. She's yeah. enjoying I, I'm looking. I'm, I'm double checking to make sure I did send him the link. Because <laughs> you know me sometimes. Right. <laughs> well, that's your age. You know, we understand. <laughs> Yes, yes, the beard and wonder. Yes, the beard and wonder. <laughs> and just, just so you guys know, he's only like four years older than me, but he is oh, older than me, shit. so I get to break his balls. Right, right. I hey, mean, I feel. I, I, I feel I do, my my best friend, who's best man at my wedding, I bust his balls all the time, and he's only four months older than me. So. Oh shit! My, you gotta capitalize when you can, man. My best friend growing up is eight days younger than me. <laughs> wow yep. eight, days. eight days August 18th to August 26th damn wow and yeah. we're still we're still friends to this day and he's still in Connecticut my other best friend is nine or ten months older than me so I was the middle guy mm -hmm. well you 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 You'll probably get to see my best friend this year because he's a 49ers fan, and he. I'm going to see about him coming out to the game when it's here. That's cool. funny. My best friend down here in Jersey is a 49ers fan. Mm -hmm. One of my best a friends is a 49ers fan. Trust me. I know a couple. I got a best friend that lives here in Philly. Diehard 49ers fan. Well, he. my friend lives <laughs> out in Tucson, Arizona. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a native there and great guy. That's cool. 
it's fun to go to games like that with the opposing fans sometimes, especially if you're cool and your friends. It's like it makes an event out of it. You get pissed off while you're in there, but you know, it's it's fun. It's all in good. Yeah, all well, good it w- wasn't this season, but the season before last, um, my friend around here that's one of my best friends, he he's a Buffalo Bills fan, and he came to the game, the game last not this 23, but 22 season with me. He didn't come this year only because he stopped watching the Bills. Because when he was watching them, they were losing them. And when mm-hmm. he stopped watching them, they started winning again. So <laughs> I tried to get him to go to the game. Yes. Yes. That would have been great. Yeah, for him, it, it would have been scoring, great. Man. But wasn't there a guy who went to Dolphins games? Like, like what was it? Like 10 or something? They lost every one until this year? Wasn't it? Oh, my goodness. Wasn't it? Like, it was a story. Like, he was he would go in all different stadiums. Like, it wasn't just at home. It was all different. Every time he went, they lost. And like I think, I think this year he finally went to one, and they won. Maybe the Jets game or something. Like I'll find the story, but it was crazy, right? Like at that Nene point, you got to start thinking you're a jinx. <laughs> I'm gonna sit there. Nene just sat there and posted something. Yeah. While we guys are gonna address the Daniels press conference. Well, I watched. I watched some of it, and um, I didn't watch. If there was one today, I didn't get a chance to watch it. But if you're talking about the one where I think it was like a, a lot of reporters. I couldn't hear a lot of the questions that was being asked yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was kind of hard for me to hear it. So, <clears throat> um, well, J- Jason Sarney said it um, best on their show last night. Listening to Mike at a press conference, he says 372 words to answer a question when he could have said 105. Wait, no I way, can't, wait, man. Like, he meanders. I can't. I haven't made one look at the Dolphins in like weeks now. I've been so on the March Madness thing. You need to just put yeah. your notification, put your notification on all and just have it on YouTube and you're going to get notifications. I've gotten all the players that we signed, uh, any type of, uh, when the defensive coordinator got announced, he talked, I mean, just put it on all and just, just be prepared because you'll get, a, you'll get your notifications. I promise you. You know, or I join, know. join groups on Facebook and you'll see all the news because everybody posts it up there. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. jump, jump, jump on this group, jump on the Flintstones. They, you know, there's a million different groups out there. Jump in. People are always posting stuff. And some of it's not even – they'll post stuff that hasn't even happened because they're trying to be ahead of it and then it never happens. <clears throat> right. <laughs> so, I mean. Yeah, so you, I, you, you get a lot of them posts that are just – Wishful thinking. Yeah. Oh, man, I hate those. Please. Ugh. It's just, well, of course, you know, then I, you know, because I, um, what, uh, administrator in a couple different groups, one of them getting all these posts about Raiders and Miami looking at doing this and that, and I check them out before I approve Mm -hmm. them or decline them. And it's it's nothing. It's actually was stuff that would end up taking you to some sex site or something. Yeah, you gotta be careful with some of that stuff. Be careful with that stuff. You can't click. You can't click on everything. Everything is everything is not click worthy. That's clickbait. You gotta watch out for clickbait. So yeah, much no. Clickbait. I, my phone's all clean. I I ain't worried about that. You know, it's mm. just that you you can't tell until you read it. You know and. Oh yeah, there's some of them I click to do and ads start popping up. I click right out. Yeah, I know. Well, this, I know it's this garbage. One, these, these, all four of them. There were four or five of them I had a decline today that I clicked on them, and an article would start coming up, and you start reading, it, and then all of a sudden these ads start popping up. You know, and that's where it's just like, okay, no, no. No, I get so, it. Nene's asking about the play calling thing. McDaniel said he's going to continue to call the plays and that was something everybody was harping on last year i think with mcdaniel you know we know his his crows we know his drawbacks mostly in game we know he's a learning coach but if there's one thing i think he's gonna stay rah rah with the current situation with tua with the guys he has with the offense with the way he calls games that's just who he is whether we like it or whether or, or not i think you know he's not going to change those stripes and and he kind of said it at his press conference you know, he, he addressed Christian Wilkins saying, you know, you can't pay everybody. But I don't look to get a lot of insight from Mike. Honestly, I know people think he's honest and earnest and all that. But 
you know, he's an authentic cat as far as owning his own style. But when it comes to the pressers, the way he, you know, seeing hard knocks and how direct he can be versus his press conferences kind of right. made me believe his press conferences are actually a lot of hot air in some ways, just like other coaches. So I don't look at the presser and think I'm going to glean some crazy knowledge. He's going to stick to the company line, his own line. Doesn't mean we could get a lot from it. He's not going to give up the play calling. To be honest, he's a. I don't hate him play calling. I just think. I think his biggest issue is he doesn't adjust on the he doesn't like to play chess on the fly. He can he can plan a good chess match and if the other team either plays into his hand or sticks to their plan, he's very good. When the other coach is able to move those pieces, you know, drive by drive or half by half, Mike gets stuck and he starts to run out of answers and just keep kind of like stammering going to the same play that's not working. That's his biggest drawback, maybe having somebody in his ear who could help diagnose the problems on the fly, but he kind of is who he is. He's going to have these brilliant games where the other coach doesn't adjust properly and he owns them. And he's going to have these games where the other coach is adjusting on the fly and he's struggling. That's my read anyway. Well, here's the thing. I'll sit there and add on to that. What I'll add on to that is everybody got to remember that this man is going into his third year of being a head coach. And you got to always understand that that is still rookie status. Now for me, and I keep telling people this, I give the head coach with fundamentals and everything included two years to implement them, their system. The third season is what we should be seeing. This is what right. the third season is like. So, but here's the thing we have to always put in the, in the midst of all of this with McDaniel and his play calling. You've got to also think this is a whole new, the whole new defense that this whole team, this defensive side has got to learn. It's another, this is the third defensive coordinator we have had in, in the McDaniel's tenure. Got to keep that in mind. With McDaniel and his play calling, I agree with everything you say, Larry. Mm -hmm. Damn near everything. My whole thing with him is now, okay, he kind of probably sitting on the offseason thinking like, look, all right, <clears throat> what happened these last two seasons, that didn't work. Right. We're going to we're going to we're going to have to do something now. You know what? Now I'm going to have to eat a little humble pie. But now I'm going to have to be a chess man. I can't be a chess player. I have to be a chess master. Yes. The man is a methodical dude. So we know how methodical he is. I love him. I love him because he is a smart dude. He's very mm -hmm. intelligent. But I think he outthinks himself sometimes as well. And I think with that, he's an overthinker. And that's not a good thing. So I Agreed. think for him, he's going to have to dial it back just a little bit and let it just let it play itself out. And then when you start seeing the pieces and 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 if he's the chess master that we feel that I think he can be, I think he's going to be one of the dangerous, most dangerous coaches next season. And I'm not just saying it as just as a Dolphin fan. So I'm saying I, year three, well, I think it, year it's, three is going to be. It's I, fine. I he I think he real I really think he needs to let someone else do the play calling because and it's it's like John was saying last night play one play two play three play four play five not this yeah. five hundred words just to get one play in and then you only got five seconds to get to the line and call the play mm -hmm. you know hike the ball um, yeah you got names same, go ahead Paul. At the same time, it's like I said last night, you know, these third down and twos, stop running the ball left and right. Run it up the fucking gut. Go straight. We have, right. we have Brooks. We have, you know, the players. Most are can even do it at times, you know. I mean, we they're pitching the ball five yards back. The player's running seven yards and barely getting two yards total gain. Nope. Right, right. I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I said it on last night's show. Um, Nene and a couple other people are in here, you know, leaving comments, and somebody's like, he, ne he needs to let two audible. The problem is his play calling takes too long. He, he's got too many words. By the time Tui hears it, repeats it, they're getting to the line. They got to do all their motions. There's no time to audible out of it. He's got to simplify his play calling. I said it. I've been saying it all this year. Have 25 set plays. Just call in play number 22. Let them look at their wristbands, line up, run your motions, run play 22. Simplify it. It doesn't have to be 36 words to get a play into the damn quarterback. 
Right. Yeah. We've seen it in person. We've seen it in person. In the yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When really? two went calling the play out. And open, like, open and drive. Open and drive. Yeah, Philly, the, the Buffalo game, when, when Skyler was in there, we had to use all six timeouts not to have delay of games. That means the play calling is taking too long. They're not yes. getting to the line. Get the plays in quicker. I don't care if you have 400 plays and you call play 328. Let them look at their wristband and go, I know what I'm doing. No, so true. It's it's weight and it's and it's unique to our team and it's consistent and constant and it is a problem. And you know they're burning timeouts, two timeouts early in 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 halves, and it's it costs well, us it, later. It wasn't so it wasn't so much this year, but last year was much worse. This year it did get better, right? But damn, get the plays in. Let the guys do their motions. You have all this stuff to to keep the defense off balance. The problem is you're letting the defensive line. They're looking at the clock, going, "All right, two, one, jump." Right, yeah. right, right. Well, we're not we're not snapping the ball with six, seven, eight, nine seconds left on the clock. And then, no, uh, the right. thing, also real quick, the thing about with about him with the play calling number one, I think they should have done it when he first got there. You know what I'm saying? I think this is his third year. He's like, oh, I'm in the groove now. Um, because at the end of the day, come on, we have da Darren Bevel, a guy who called uh, an offensive, uh, you know, with this when he went to the Super Bowl with Seattle, Brett Favre. You name it. He's has he has a wealth of experience calling plays as an offensive coordinator. Darren Bevel, I think he should be the be the offensive coordinator play caller in my opinion. But at the end of the day, I think McDaniel's is at a point where, hey, look, I got the number one offense. I I I got the number one this. I got the number one that. Why am I going to give it up now? Well, because you had the well, number one offense from September to November, and then in yes. December and January you couldn't score. <laughs> Bro, and that's that's a trend, and I I I know we're gonna get excited. I'm gonna have fun in September and October this year. I'm not I'm not inhuman. I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna enjoy myself. But I know that come December, we're I know what we're in for because it just is what it is. It's becoming a trend. I hope I'm wrong, but and no, then the stats but, always pile up. Well, yeah, because you pile up seventy early, and in, in, yes. you put up thirty four against. LA, you put up 70 against Denver. You're putting up, you know, these astronomical numbers against teams that didn't turn out to be that great. And then when you play the good teams, you're not putting up points. You're not the stats aren't there, but you've inflated the stats so much in those games that hey, they got the number one offense. You know what I care yes. about? The number one scoring offense. You can have all the stats in the world. If the points ain't there, it doesn't matter. Well, like I like I said many times before, records don't mean shit. Records don't win you the game. Right. No, right. but if you're the number one scoring offense, you're winning a lot more games. Exactly. Oh, yeah. But, you know, on the, on top of all this, um, you know, someone has stated that our offensive line is not big enough to run up the middle. That's bullshit. You also got a fullback there that can start start off and have Devon A. Chan or Mostart right behind him. You're going to get that two yards or so. You could have you could have Ingold and Brooks right behind them. Take those yeah, two. Yeah, exactly. And then the other, the other thing I'd like to see is, is, all right, we don't want Tua to get injured. We don't want him to take hits to the head. It's third third and one. God damn, put somebody else in there, a quarterback, to, and do the tush push. Yeah, I don't well, that, understand the rigidity with quarterback. Like, there were certain times where just throw somebody else in there and do something. Like, it's not the end of the world. Just because it's not conventional, so what? Some of the least conventional teams have good seasons or, or win the game. Who cares? And I think we did more of it when we had uh, uh, Brissett or whoever we had. We would throw him in there every now and then for a sneak. Because yes. who the hell cares? Because who cares? Even if they a know sneak, it's coming. A sneak or it. a long ball. Yeah, just just you know, do it. Who cares? You, you, but, you know, but, I mean, any anytime that you have to – anytime that you have to circumvent your, your, your starting quarterback, I don't know if that's my, my quarterback. Anytime that guy is not a three down guy or can be a four down guy, I, I, well, I, 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 it's not. It's not that we're at the same time we're trying to protect our O line is not necessarily big enough to do a tush push. Sure, they are. If you get a guy back there with Ingold and Brooks running up behind him to push him forward, sure well, they that, are. That's that's not a tush push though, really. It is if he take if if you put in say. Um, Let's just say Berrios. Yeah, he's a small guy, but if he's taking a snap and then Ingold and, 
and uh, Brooks are coming up from behind and pushing them. That is the tush push. That's exactly what they do. Kelsey, Kelsey yeah. in Philadelphia is not a big guy, if you notice. No, he's only no. six two eighty five, but you know, it's it's the guys behind the quarterback uh, that are any, pushing him forward. You, well, you, anybody remember anybody remember Pittsburgh in the nineties when they had Neil yeah. O'Donnell and they had Flash? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Dude, yes. When he yeah. when when Cardell still came in, they already knew what was good. It was a run of some sort, something. They knew it. And it's so still when, when you yeah, but but we not built like that. We don't have a, unless you got Skylar Thompson that can come in and do it. Maybe. Hey, let's Skylar do I mean, it. But you, but you but you don't want to. I mean, I don't know. We got to take our starting quarterback out just to do a QB sneak. I mean, come on, guys. I I personally don't care. I want the first down. I don't care who gets it. Exactly. Keep drives alive. Oh, okay. Drives alive. I, 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 and I get you. I get you. But I t- well, what I'm getting at the long story is. I don't feel comfortable paying him fifty million dollars, and you can't be a potential four down guy. Sorry. Oh, I, listen, I don't want to. I I say make him play on the fran the uh, fifth year option this year, and then if you have to franchise him next year, he'll only get like thirty eight million, and, and you're not paying him fifty. Right. You know, and and in the next two years, if he doesn't win us playoff game for us something wrong somewhere right, right. period you know and like but then that's going to be a question mark of then we're going to have to start all the way from the beginning so that means daniel will be on the hot seat and here we go again all over again that's just you how know what again, though yeah yeah but here's the problem if you sign him to a four-year 200 million dollar contract and 75 80 80 millions guaranteed he goes down with a concussion this year you're still spending that 75 80 million dollars yeah. No, and I that's do. The I agree. In the room I too. Agree. Just because he made it through one year doesn't mean he make it through every year. There's still the injury that's question true. on top of the question of performing in the clutch late in the year. You still have the injury question too. That didn't go away. Like mm-hmm. people forget, and you you hand look is look. I'm a Dolphins fan. Everybody is. I, I wish I want Tua to be the best player he could be. I wish he set the world on fire last year. Here's the thing. If he plays on a fifth-year option or whatever he plays on, if he sets the world on fire, then good. Let's pay him the bag because then he can handle it without the supporting cast like Mahomes. But if he doesn't, then we can build the cast around him because these questions persist, and it's inobjective to ignore them, and it's also setting yourself up for another disappointment to get too optimistic and wishfully thinking and try to talk yourself out of the reality that we see. There's legitimate question marks on the field and with regard to injury, they can't be mitigated simply by wishing them away. Well, and, and us as fans, I mean, think about it. He made it through all 17 games last year. Statistically, is that going to happen again this year? Yeah. yeah. So w- what's our backup plan? And by the way, John, remember that the the narrative was if he <laughs> if he makes it through, they could because remember the year before. The narrative was, oh, he got hurt later in the season. Everybody forgot that there were struggles even before he was hurt late in the season that year. So the narrative took hold and the truth became and the common knowledge became. Everybody forgot what really happened and it just became, well, if Tua can last 17 games, they're going to go deep into the playoffs because it's all about him being healthy. Well, he was healthy and it didn't matter. There were still struggles at the end of the season. And now the narrative is even though the defense played their heart out and still put us in position score wise to win games at the end of the year, and the offense was the ones who struggled, the narrative has still become well, damn, that defense was so injured. We got to revamp that defense. And if the defense is healthy and a little more hard hitting, we'll go far. But again, it's ignoring this persistent problem of late season struggles. I'm not saying nope. that the past guarantees the future, but they continue to ignore it and continue to pretend just ignore the elephant in the room nonstop. Now I think if the defense is harder hitting and more tenacious, maybe we stack up more wins early in the year. Unlike last year where they're a little slow to catch up, but I don't think it negates our offensive woes late in the season where teams catch on to McDaniel guys get banged up to a struggles in cold weather and guys figure out what we're doing. I think that's going to persist. Well, that's the biggest problem is other teams figure out what we're doing and they shut it down and the offense can't move the ball. That Kansas City playoff game, the defense played well enough for us to win that game. The problem was the offense couldn't move the damn ball and put points on the board. 100%. Shouts to Nene. Remember for two months on my channel, shouts to Nene. Um, no, but I agree with you, John. I mean, I, I 100% agree with you. And that's 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 the problem. Scott, why are we, why are we talking about your channel? Plug your channel so people know where to go. 
Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Fin Attic Fury, guys. Fin Attic Fury is my channel. If you're watching here, go over to Fin Attic Fury and click subscribe. And tonight I'm going to be sharing the heck out of this channel with this show uh, because these guys are great. Now, quite frankly, you know, I, I watch a lot of different channels and some channels just have a good vibe, man. A good energy, a good conversation. This is definitely one of them. I hope you guys have me back. Too, this is that's what we always strive for. Awesome. Appreciate you, man. Awesome. Thank you. Just to give you a little back to join us anytime, Larry. Yeah, Larry, I'll definitely do it. To you give guys you a little back too, man. This this channel started because Papa Paul had a vision. He mm -hmm. wanted people to come on and talk. If you disagree, that's fine. No name calling. No telling somebody you're an idiot because your opinion's different. Right. That's why we always say, oh, I agree with you, or I agree with part of that, I, I disagree with you. No. I can disagree with, with winners. It doesn't make him wrong. It doesn't make me right. We just right. state our opinions, and then we, you know, we enjoy the content of people chiming in and putting their comments in, and they have different opinions. This show is about fandom. I love it's it. About, yeah, it's not, you're not going to hear anybody saying, oh, you're an idiot, you're stupid, this, that. No, give your opinion. Look, Shake Money comes on sometimes, and all season Shake was busting balls about Wilkin. Well, he wanted him gone, and we <laughs> laughed about it. That's his opinion. Well, now he's gone, so Shake's happy. Right. You know, this is an opinion show. It's to talk. It's to enjoy. It's to find out information. We talk about you know the rule changes, what's going on, so people understand what's going on. <laughs> we get to talk about everything, free agency, the games. Listen, if we had a good game, we still pick apart little things. We had a great game, we still pick apart things. We had a bad game, we all come on here and give our opinions on why it was a bad game. But nobody's jumping off a cliff over it. Yes. Uh, no, a hundred percent. And no one's getting out of way out of their way out of their shirt, screaming and yelling and getting all no, no, crazy. No, it's not no, worth we it. don't do that over here, man. Yeah, I, we, I agree. I'm gonna tell you something. I've always said this to everybody that we've had on here. The only reason why I agreed to do this, brother, is I work at a mental hospital. I have just mm -hmm. celebrated my 16th year anniversary at a mental hospital, working in the kitchen. So I've told people I deal with double crazy i not only yeah. work with crazy i have to deal with society which is already crazy so yeah. i tell people i'm not dealing that with that when i come home and on my downtime when i'm on my downtime i want to talk to my friends fam i want to be able to bring people on i want the i want people to sit there and be able to speak like for example we were probably one of the only ones and i think um the fence tailgate might have did something also the day the the bills that we lost to the bill uh the, when we lost to kansas city in kansas city and we did a podcast that next sunday we did a podcast mm -hmm. we had oj pop up we had um a couple people come through so you know we wanted people to sit there and air out you know say what they needed to say get things off their chest but nobody needs to come up here and hey listen you ain't gotta scream you ain't gotta holler i want you to be able to speak because we want to hear you clearly we want to yeah. hear what That's your true thoughts are like i tell people you can say what you need to say. We've had a fan on here, came in here talking about he doesn't know if he wanted to be a Dolphin fan or not. So I was like, dude, oh, wherever oh, you oh. Do, I'll give you my address. You can send me all your Dolphin stuff and we'll be good. That's no problem, you know? So I tell people, man, listen, I've always liked to have to been able to do something like this with Papa Paul, with John O'Hellen, with Shake Money. I mean, me and Shake Money, the fence tailgate is love with us mm -hmm. and them and it's love mm -hmm. with a lot of different podcasts across. So, you know, to be able to have people like yourselves and future guests on our show, this is what it is. This is what it's about. Nothing changes. We're straight to the point. You can agree to disagree, just like John said. And we can have a good time speaking about sports and sometimes just life in general. Yeah, totally agree, bro. Yeah, the vibe is, is great. And I, I love it. I'll definitely be. You know, I've already watched you guys. I'm going to continue to watch. I'm going to make sure other people subscribe, and I'll continue yeah. to hop on with you guys. And hope you guys you. come over and hop on with me, especially yeah, during the course. season. Yeah, um, appreciate And I'll set some up with you guys, it. too. You know, get you guys on uh, individually even, you know, on, on some of my shows in the off season, just to get out there. But it's we'll definitely do that because I really appreciate what, it. This, when this was a good conversation. Yeah, huh? everybody, everybody on here has been nice to me except for Papa Pa. He's Papa Pa so mad. <laughs> I mean, because I was talking about Wilkins, that he's, he's holding my, my trophy hostage. <laughs> I got Larry, you spoon for you. <laughs> what were you saying? Who's that? Larry, when, when are you on? 
I'm on. So right now in the off season, I usually try to do every other Monday. I try to go live and just just talk, and then I'll do like special shows here and there. I'll schedule something and just put out a recorded show or when news drops. And then during the season, it's every every Tuesday night we have our show with me, Shake, Lucci, and uh, and Greg. And then I do Mondays, try to do every Monday during the season yeah. too, and that's a live. And by show. the way, uh, so don't forget uh, in the blender. I do in the blender. Yes. John O'Hara, I, I gotta have you on. I, I want to have you on there one, uh, one day, because the, what the what, what in the blender is we, I, we talk about why you became a Dolphin fan, and we talk about the season, but more primarily why you became a Dolphin fan, your greatest Dolphin memories and stuff like that. Like I said, Dolphin Thursday is gonna be on there tomorrow, and while we were speaking this Friday, I'm doing a special episode. Uh, Mike Oliva from Dolphin Stock is gonna be on there. In the blender nice. Friday, so nice. We're gonna have a nice yeah, and on in the blender is on the Fanatic Fury channel, which I dropped the link to. That's my channel. Shake does yeah. his own show on Thursdays on that channel. Um, so tune in. He interviews people. The interviews are awesome. It's just a a change of pace. More Dolphins content in the off season that you know you're not really getting anywhere else. So he does a great yeah. job with that. That's, that's right, his main. Just do oh. me a favor, drop the link. I mean, both of you guys can drop your links one more time because Nene just said you're dropping a link. So, Nene, I don't know what link you're asking she, she for. Talking about, she talking about to chat. To chat. Oh, to chat. Yeah. Drop the link, Paul. I've done it a few times. Yeah. I think, yeah, no, because I think he here. has to do it on your channel. Uh, 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 Larry K, you got to do it on your channel. I can't do it because I don't have the link to to, yeah, yeah. to let people join. So you got to I'll make it happen. I could I could I'll, I'll drop it on the channel, the link channel. I'll drop it on the channel. Maybe they could click on that. I'll okay. drop it on our channel. Your channel. Yeah, make sure you guys are subscribing to to Papa Paul too, man. Absolutely. If you're not, if you're Appreciate watching. You. Appreciate the love, man. Make sure you Definitely. come over here and 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 subscribe to this channel here. Yeah, man, cuz cuz we're all collaborating. We here. Of, of course, anytime. Okay. You know that. That's Monday, that's what, right. what, what time on Mondays do you go on? So that varies, bro. Because whenever, whenever, because I kind of, kind of work, but not in the office all day. So like, whenever I get the, it's usually afternoons. Like I'll sit down okay. once I get my head clear. Like one, anywhere from one to four o'clock, I'll sit down and do like an hour or two. I got um, you. Usually every other Monday if I can, and I'll usually try to announce it. Like I'll be on and and invite people on and and say we're coming on. But each of you guys too, like we'll talk. I'll just get you on, even if it's solo, even if it's pre-recorded or we plan it or whatever to talk about a topic. We should mm-hmm. do it and, and cross promote because this show's so good. Uh, just cross promote. You guys are Wednesdays, right? Because you were telling me. Yes, yeah, so Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Wednesdays at eight forty-five. Yeah, I'm gonna leave this as uh, as my regular Wednesday programming and just be on. And then when I could hop up, I'll hop up. And when I could be in the chat, I'll be in the chat. But well, I got I got a question for everybody. I mean, my my biggest thing for the rest of this off season and for the draft, I'm hoping to see more. Offensive and defensive line brought in. We need we need some trenches. I mean, we need some strong trench work done. And I mean, because three seconds is is at the most that two are gets. Anything more than three seconds, the line's breaking down. Yes. And he well, needs absolutely. he needs a little he needs a little bit more time. In order to get a second read, because he can barely get a first read. Well, that see, and that's where, and I, I know you and I disagree on this one, Paul, because I'm not always I sure know. it's a read. I think it's the way the play calling is. It's such a an offense that is just predicated on timing. I, his and his I, first read I, is his only read. Yeah, I know, I know, but there, there's a lot of times, and you've seen it where there's been players wide open. And he's thrown it where a place he shouldn't be throwing it to, really. Well, because that's what the play called for. I I know that, but it's also because he doesn't have any more time to even look around. But I, I, think, think, I agree to disagree with you, John. Right. I, right. I, 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 I think, to be honest with you, I think defense, because of his, well, and I, and I say this, with, I, I say this lightly. I put this lightly because of Tua's. What do you What do you say? His football acumen, his lack thereof football acumen. Defenses are able to kind of fool him or throw him off by doing post snap, post snap, snap adjustments and things of that nature. That's where he misses wide open guys. That's what I think after looking at all twenty twos. 
<laughs> he looks at, he sees the look pre pre snap, but post snap he gets lost. And see, Tua actually at this level, the longer he holds the ball, the less efficiency he, efficient he is. Yeah, I I've heard you say that, Monty, but at the same time, um, I, I'll have to go. You know exactly like um, Dan B said. You know we we talked about with the the length it takes to get the play in and he doesn't have any time to make any line adjustments if he sees something. Well, that's because the offense is predicated on timing. Well, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, what I'm saying is if he's, if he, they're only getting to the line and they only have five seconds to get to the line, get the ball snapped, he, he doesn't have any time to look around and see if the defense is not what they were expecting or something. And to change anything, even if you wanted to. Oh, I, I totally agree. I mean, that's why I say I'd rather see the ball snapped with eight, nine seconds to go or even five where he had time to look around, see. <laughs> and that comes down to the play calling, getting into him quicker. But I, I, my, my feeling is McDaniel's system is you're throwing to this spot at this time. Whether the yeah, receiver is there or not. Yes, that's the system. That that is the system. I think it's designed because of the line and because of Tua's propensities and his injury proneness and his whatever they think his skill set was best suited by a shorter drop and a and a spot. I don't want to say spot throw, but kind of a spot throw. You make that read, you put it in that place. It's a timing route. It's very intricate timing. That's how it is. That being said, I do think this team. While they think, again, they're always telling us not to worry, they think their timing routes and offense is impeccable. It's very good, and it's especially good when everybody's fresh and when not everybody's caught up to us in the beginning of the season. If they want to sustain later in the season and, and innovate above and beyond what they're used to doing, they need to bolster the lines on both sides, and they need to implement maybe some drops that are longer, some reads that are not purely timing. And that's up to McDaniel and Tua to do because there are limitations to it. It looks great early and then it struggles late. It has to do with the personnel in the trenches, but it also has to do with the offense itself and the offensive design. So I think you're actually both right in that regard, in my opinion, because yes, we lose Wilkins. Yes, the, the offense is more timing and finesse and quicker reads. We're going to have to build on that in both ways, in my opinion, trench-wise. However, we're always going to have some mostly quick reads and, and quick spot throws because that is the offense they're running. So, real quick, well, I wanna, hopefully, bringing in Juno helps out a lot. Yeah, right. real quick, I want to agree. Um, welcome, Mr. Polk, to the platform. Mr. Polk, what's up, brother? How are you? Hey, how's it going, Papa Paul, Dolphin Winners, John, uh, Mounty, Shake Money. Larry K, it's a, it's a pleasure um, to see uh, seeing you up here now. Also. Yes, sir, brother. Great Paul, to see you. how you doing, sir? I'll be I'm, back I'm, in a couple minutes, winners. Okay. I got you. Okay. But, um, you know, I, I, um, I can't agree. The one good one good thing in our favor, now, I, 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 I know I've said this a many times, you know, we ha we do have Bush Berry, and he's been doing pretty good with the offensive line. But, yes, we do need to uh, – address the um the defensive line and offensive line but um you got you got to come to me McDaniels had to and I'm not putting McDaniels down you got to come up with more plays you got to utilize more players because like I said these teams already know when when um when the off, when when um we line up if they're going to go to Tyreek if they're going to go to Waddle because that's the main source. That's the main thing that we've been doing mm -hmm. uh, pretty much most of the season. And then the teams, like I said, around mid-season, the teams are already caught on to doing that. But you got to utilize your tight ends. You got to utilize your other wide receivers. You got you got to use the run the game at the right time. And if it's working, kind of kind of stick with it and whatever. But you got to change because I'm you know what I'm I'm not what I'm seeing. I, the, uh, this season that went by is a repeat of last of the season before. Yeah, and we got and, and, and to me, they're sugar they're sugarcoating a little bit by revamping by revamping the defense. And I'm not saying that's a bad idea, but 
they're trying to make it look as though okay, well, the defense is the, is the issue when it's really the offense. So I agree. You know, I've been saying that. I agree with right. you 100. percent Yeah. You got you got to change. You got to change it up. I mean, I, I, I I'm not putting down Coach McDaniel because I'm a t- when 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 we first got Coach McDaniel's and I did you know I, uh did my research on him and then after the first after the first season I said he's like a mad scientist. Cause he's gonna he's gonna change the the NFL with the knowledge and, and and skills that he has, but he needs to get somebody else to call the plays, and he needs to be the head coach that looks over the whole team, the team as a whole. And then I don't know what's going on with special teams because this guy, I think this is this guy's third year being our special team coach. And yeah, I know we were talking about that too before. It's and how crazy. he still don't know how he has a job, bro. It's crazy. Well, he must got some kind of connection, some kind of way. Maybe somebody, <laughs> I don't know. I can't explain either, that. either that or he's got some evidence that somebody doesn't want out. <laughs> there you go, John. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, but you know, we, we, got, we got to do something different because I mean, hopefully, by them bringing in the, the two uh, tight ends, to hopefully, that's a sign that. Uh, McDaniels is coming up with some more, you know, some more plays that's going to, like I said, utilize more, uh, more of the tight ends and, and, and the receivers and what have you. So hopefully that that's a sign right there when he brought him those two uh, tight ends. I got it. Uh, Danny Crossman has the audio of uh, Ross bribing um, <laughs> Brian Flores to tank. That's what yeah, he must. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot worse than they said. <laughs> well, I, I just thought he was on his knees for somebody. That's all. Oh, <laughs> no diddy. No diddy. Paul, <laughs> always, once a month, Paul just has to go off the deep end to one side. <laughs> once no a month. Diddy, Paul, no diddy, man. Hey, it's the only reason I could see why he's still there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> And then I'm gonna add one one more thing too. We would we would y'all talk. I think y'all. I came in with y'all talking about the third down play, third down and short play. And I mentioned this also with the red zone. Go ahead and utilize Chris Brooks. Yeah, yeah. you had the man on the roster. Yes, he he showed some. He to me, I saw I saw some good flashes of him in preseason. You and in, nice tra- in training camp, I saw a lot of good stuff uh, from him in training camp as well, Mr. Polk. Right, and he's a rookie. And he, he has, to me, he has that, he kind of has that dog mentality. But the thing that, the negative that I'm hearing from other people is that, okay, well, he's injury prone. The man, okay, he got injured, but also a chain got injured. Well, so, you know, you know what? Tell me a player that is not injury prone. See, my thing is this, not to cut you off, Mr. Polk or Paul. Mm-hmm. If no, no, anybody no. watched that play, he actually got tackled around the leg area. So my whole thing is if they watched the all 22 of that play, we were actually at that game, Paul, I think, and John, yeah. a couple of us, like, yeah. like actually heard people. I actually knew somebody that was actually like right there. And they heard like they heard him screaming because when the tackle hit, it was like an instant. So well, he let, got let's, hit below. Let's, so, let's welcome Nene to the panel. Nene. Nene, what's, what's up, Nene? Nene? Hey, how what's y'all up? doing? Uh, it's, it's an honor to be on the page. I wanted to speak to something that y'all was saying and see if I could combine the ideas because I think we all saying the same thing, but in different ways. Um Somebody mentioned the offense being, you know, a timing-based offense. But we do know that's the offense that they saw that fit to a skill set the best because allegedly under the other regime, having him in like a pro-style offense wasn't working. So they created this offense that was supposed to, um, I guess, amplify his skills. I think the problem was, I don't know if y'all watch 560 AM, but there's a show with Channy Crowder and he, a former Dolphin, and they had Aronde Gaston on it. And he mentioned it like when we were winning in September or October. He said it was actually after the Philly game when we took that loss um, that we needed a plan B, that that offense is cute and it looks good and it gets butts in the seats. But when you play, 
you know, some better teams that are more physical that can knock you off your timing, then it's going to look insignificant like it did. Example, when we played the Chargers and the rest of that 2022 season. So I just think the Miami Dolphins, for the most part, and I've said it in spaces before, when you don't address something and you try to hide it with a gimmick, it's going to get exposed. Um, the 2.5 seconds, because allegedly the offensive line cannot guard beyond that. You would you really thought you were going to do that all the way to the Super Bowl? Like, <laughs> right. it, 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 it's, it's something to where, you know, people get mad at me. And I'll be honest, I really don't care. But when you're building a team... <laughs> You have to ensure that this team can survive not just the first 60 days of football, but all the way to February. And, and the concepts are the same. I, I, I don't have the data in front of me, but if you name the last couple of Super Bowl champions, they have something in common that in January and February, they plan their best football in the roughest conditions. It's not going to be Miami. It's not going to be a dome where it's controlled weather. We play in a conference that I believe we're the only team that has 70, 80 degree weather in December, possibly. So, right. and I would be honest with you, if we're being honest, even Dan Marino, and I love Dan, we ran into that problem even in the Dan Marino era. about. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a, uh, uh, to uh, uh, Mike McDaniel problem. It's something that we have not figured. I always said that we're not in the right conference. I don't think, I know some of the games in the rivalry games are cute, but technically I think we should have been in the AFC South um, because like our weather doesn't make any sense for us to go in those conditions. But let's be honest, we haven't done it since what, 83, almost 41 years ago. So, you know, the management, everybody, someone brought up a point, and I agree, and I'm a land here. Even without the weather in the offensive line, it does not seem like the team front office staff is on the same sheet of music. You cannot win if it's disorganization and chaos. The coach is saying one thing, the GM saying another thing. You, every other year you're changing out coordinators. There's mm -hmm. no way you can build continuity and culture. I know a lot of people don't like that word that are not Miami Heat fans, but it's true. You got to build some continuity. Yeah. Look, at, look at the Kansas City Chiefs. One of the things they have is they have continuity in that front office, the head coach, and the quarterback. And I, I just think I don't care who you <laughs> get in here. You can get Jesus and Cleats. But if you, fix, <laughs> if you fix some of your structural, like even look at McDaniel and and um, uh, I call him Greer Aloysius. Y'all learn that is my name for him. Look at, <laughs> look at the press conference. They didn't even sound like a united front in the press conference. I, I urge anybody that disagrees, go and we rewind the portion when they talk about the drafting. He says, well, he wants to do this, but I want to do this. That alone tells me it's chaos. When you look at the um, every time we lose, what does Tua say? He says um, it's a communication problem. Every time we lose, it's like a, a, a recording, communication. And then hear, we hear that Tyreek mention that certain individuals don't like critiquement and they won't talk to you for like a week. And I'm not just saying Tua because – it could be other guys on the team on both sides of the ball. Nobody played that as a factor. They heard him say it, and they were just like automatically tour. But I think it's, it's a disease within that organization, and I personally don't think they cleaned it up. When they when they were supposed to do the cleanse, Christopher Aloysius Greer should have been out of there. That's just my opinion. The man, since he got here as a scout 20 years ago, as soon as he got here, gentlemen, and people that's listening, as soon as Greer got here as a scout, we didn't go to the playoffs ever since his arrival. So that tells you something. But I just think it's – and then they – I think they get the fan base triggered. Like, we – with one fan base is pro to us. Now we got an anti-Mike McDaniel when at first everybody loved Mike McDaniel. 
there's no united front. As some of y'all know, but I was in the military for 21 years. And one of the things I learned is when we had to do missions, whether I liked everybody, the leadership had to come in order for us to be successful. Because if it was holes within the decision makers, then the soldiers are lost. And that's what I saw in December, January. I don't know about you, but they looked, they folded like a cheap suit. You know, with all of the talent, all of the, the, the number one on offense, that meant absolutely nothing when we faced, you know, Tennessee. That's the game that I would use because that's the this that to me is when the season ended, is when we lost to Tennessee at home. Because it yep. proves there's a formula to beat this quick offense. And they did it as a five win team with a backup quarterback. You know, in, in our house. So I think there's a lot of things. I don't think it has anything with drafting. I don't think it has anything to do with players. We've seen it. Uh, Ross, one thing I give that joker is he'll open his wallet and he'll bring people here. Those are not the problem. It's structural. Until they are united front in decision making, I think we will now see this get to the playoffs a first round exit. Thank you, gentlemen, for letting me say my piece. I definitely appreciate you. Oh, any, no problem, any time, any time, can I pick back? On, can I pick back on that a little bit? Sure. Yeah. Um, with that being the case, when you look at the the CEO, who is Ross, he is supposed to be the one that's supposed to. What's the word? If he's the owner, he's supposed to. Uh, make sure that everybody lines up from him down to the coaches and even down to the train he's supposed to do that you know you can't, that's why the whole the whole situation is is sort of sort of off is, is sort of off because I agree with you yes i think it he, starts from there yeah exactly it starts from here and it's supposed to be a domino effect going all the way down and then once once when it comes down to the 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 uh uh the roster and what have you, then it's up to the coaches to help develop these players and what have you. But even as far as when we get to the tough games or the, or, or the cold weather games, you know, we got the fans. Uh, uh, you know, I get tired. I, I've been hearing this excuse for years and years, and I'm not saying that it's wrong, that, you know, with the cold weather, we can't play in cold weather. We got to find a way to get over that because I'm getting tired of hearing that. And I've been hearing that going way back, going way back. Yeah, and everybody, so even got, if we were in the South, we'd have to still play playoff teams potentially in cold weather or and at a conf, you know, a conference but non-division rival in a scheduled game. That you can't get out of it. It's football. It gets cold later. We got the advantage when teams don't want to play in the hot weather when it's exactly. almost 100 degrees on the field in September. We got to go up and play in the cold. That's part of football. We got to learn. There's right. dome teams, dome teams that have to play outside too. I mean, we're not the only team that that you know faces challenges going up north. Can just I say one? Can exactly. I say one more thing? I don't think it's. And let me just correct myself. I don't think it's about weather. I think it's about mindset and focus. Let me say that again. Mindset and focus. It seems to me, and I could be wrong. The front office is more concerned about butts in the seats yep. and popularity. I They're agree. not concerned yep. about winning. And to me, that is a disease that goes all the way down to everybody else in the organization. That's why they call it the organization. The head of the body will always trickle down through the spine all the way to the feet. And that's even what you as a human being. And when you look at people, their individual mindsets. 2,000 yards. You even hear McDaniel mm -hmm. talking smack to Dan Marino, of all people, of taking his records. You know, I just think their their mindset is not, and, and I don't want somebody to quote me like, well, she's trying to say they want to lose. I just think they're comfortable with individual accolades, and then they use their media machine to cultivate that culture. Because when you bring up something about this team, well, they were the number one offense. They did all of these individual things, but it 
it, it's okay because it's 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 good to have, but the goal is to win the games that matter. And the difference between winning in September and October is you some teams can carry that momentum into the deeper parts of the season. But if you catch momentum going into the deeper part, let's give you an example, Kansas City. They look like absolutely garbage can juice throughout the season. They lost to Denver, all of those teams, right? But when it got around after Thanksgiving, they caught that stride. And that stride took them all the way into the Super Bowl, right? And Mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I, I like winning in the summer. But we're learning, especially with this team and how it, they got to snowball that momentum into these games. And it's a mental thing. When you're playing in that type of conditions, like I just revealed, I was in the military. So sometimes I would have to put my mind somewhere else in order to do what I had to do. Same thing when you're in rough conditions. You have to mentally put yourself there. But if you're mentally weak to where – when you make a mistake, there's no accountability. There's no one giving you good stress. Every We went from one extreme to the next. We went from maybe too disciplined in, something, in some ways with these new age players to too lax. And you can see it on the field. Like there's nobody really, when we are losing, we don't see them like upset. It, there's no one trying to galvanize the troops. Even people that came here who used to have that mentality, you're seeing that they're conforming their behavior to this team and how it's run, the the frat boys. Everybody's going to each other's barbecue and this, that, and the other. And I have no role with camaraderie, but camaraderie is not the mission. Winning championships is. So we mm-hmm. we can have a, a – I, I, I like to celebrate when we had that trophy over our head and we finally have a – a championship parade in Miami besides all the other sports teams that that's there in Miami. Do you know out of all the sports team, the Miami Dolphins, which is a football town, is the only one that hasn't won anything or gotten into a, a divisional round in 25 plus years. That says a lot about the structure and, and, and it does have something to do with the players. But if I, I'm going to say this and I know people are going to get mad at it. Do you notice every disciplinarian has there's been a part of the team has been pushed out. Yeah. Every disciplinarian that they brought here nice. to clean up a mess where they were strategically brought here to be tough and clean up messes. And then once they do it, I don't know if this is the players who's going to run the management and crying or the management's micromanage. But either way it goes, they're bring in these in these guys. Because remember when Vic Mangio first got here, everybody was happy for the most part. He, everybody, yes. Yeah. And then when he left, we never have nobody leave with grace. Look how they doing Xavier Howard. Look how they doing Christian. And Christian Wilkins ain't even say nothing. So there's, to me, this immaturity, too, with the organization. And, Comes in from order- Ross. That's how he does things, in my opinion. It trickles yeah. down. That's yeah, his that's mentality. That, yeah, that real estate, cutthroat, nonsense mentality he brings here. I'm telling you, that's an organizational thing. I Listen, exactly. I agree. First of all, I'd like to say, Miss Nene, you should have your own show. <laughs> no, 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 no. I only did it today because some of y'all know, I know Larry knows because he's an actual confirmed lawyer, but I'm in law school and I'm also in divinity school and Wednesdays are the one, well, honestly, it's Holy Week. So the campus is like kind of closed for observing those who mm-hmm. observe Christ. Well, you you, sh- you should have your own show and, and write this stuff down and then go through with your panel and go through all this because... <laughs> I'm sorry, what, what I didn't you, want to micromanage the show, but it's just like, no, 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 no. The, point you, the point you brought up were absolutely valid. I've said it for years. Ross is not the owner I want. Ross bought the team, and, and don't quote me on the exact price, but he bought it for $1.4 billion. It's now worth $5.2 billion. He bought it as an investment. It's only been the last couple of years that he opened up the checkbook and really mm-hmm. started paying players. He didn't do this years past. You know, it was, oh, sign this guy, you know, try to get this contract here and, and keep it as low as possible the last couple of years because now he's getting older and he wants to win a Super Bowl, yeah. you know, and, and he doesn't know how much time he has left. So now he's really pushing to win one. And it does start with Ross. Um, exactly. You know, yeah. and, and that's any organization. I was in the military as well. It starts at the top and works its way down. You're in the military or were. I'm sure you, you're very familiar with shit rolls downhill. 
if, if, if something goes wrong up I'm top. I'm retired you, now, but yes. Yeah, I was in the military. I was in the Army station in Germany. Shit rolls downhill. If something happens up top, you're feeling it down the bottom. It may not be your fault, but you're feeling it down the bottom. Mm-hmm. And then I just wanted to cap because this is the thought I actually have. And I think that's why these guys that we drafted a part of the rebuild, they're leaving, right? Because well, and no, I, listen, they're leaving because, listen, Christian Wilkins, there was no way we were paying him. It's just not possible. The Raiders, in yeah. my opinion, overvalued him. Yeah. 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 And, and we could love him. We couldn't do anything. But listen, can I, I lo- render another opinion? I, and I obviously I'm not in the negotiations, but yeah, I, I was in the military for 22 years. I was a recruiter and I was food service. So one thing you could you can kind of 96 read, Bravo, 94 Bravo. Now, yes, yeah. So <laughs> I just retired two years ago. But one thing I can tell is someone when they BSing, and you know one thing about privates, they know how to lie to you. And I just have this overwhelming feeling that Greer is not getting to the meeting on time you get what i'm saying it's like i'm gonna use the military since you said it. it's like when i have a soldier that's showing signs that they're out of control but i'm not doing anything or the only thing i do is talk to them eventually it's going to get to a situation where i'm gonna have to stand before somebody because this joker done really got in some trouble i truly believe in the cases of wilkins and i think javon holland is is probably going to walk too i think what he's Uh doing I think what he is doing is he has an offer that he won't move with, right? And, I mean, in some ways it's good business, but some ways it's bad business because if you go through this rebuild and 75% of the players you brought in to fix this thing leave, and we can't all just say, well, they're going to the bottom feeders and they're getting the back. That's true. But one thing I know, if you treat people the right way, part one, doing business the right way, and if you have a culture where I'm going to stay here because we are we have a plan of winning, some people will, 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 will work with you. You get what I'm saying? And I just think more details need to come out. But my feeling is Greer comes off as a, a, a car salesman to me. And then when he loses, he puts out fillers to the media and here's the phrase they bet on themselves <laughs> and you know they won that's not a good gm i get it some guys are gonna want to get their bag but if it's consistent player at the player like because look at abg his contract wasn't even that much what he accepted with minnesota and then when you figure out taxes i think he may have lost money with going there i think it's a lot going on with how Greer has managed this rebuild. I think he does not get to the table early enough and he thinks he can throw state tax. This is what we're building here. And and these guys are probably looking at it. Look at Xavier Howard. And I know he wasn't no saint, but if you caught his interview, he said something very interesting. He said, I want to go somewhere that I can win. And people took offense to it. But I said, read between the lines. This is a player that's in the locker room that knows what's going on. And he is telling you that playing alongside Jalen Ramsey and all of the things we have, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, Greer is a part of the problem. And he is a part, like that deal with Christian Wilkins, it shouldn't even got to the Las Vegas uh, Raiders because if you would have took care of it in 2022, not 2023, and you would have extended him, you wouldn't have had the problem of people walking and all you're going to get is a third round compensatory pick for somebody that you built. You're tanking. Like, here's my thing. <coughs> Dolphins fans where I am upset about this. You created a model to lose, to get all of these picks and all of your picks are walking away. And I don't think for some of those guys is about the bag, but I think it's more on why they walking away and I wouldn't be surprised I hate to say it that we lose Waddle because Waddle not Waddle I'm sorry um Holland Holland because Holland is already sending he's very active on social media he put a post of uh somebody robbing and they had a money bag and I said this guy loves sending subliminals through his tweets 
it would, and you know, if we don't get it done, he's gone. We don't have a fifth year option for Javon Holland. He will walk. Mm-hmm. And- oh, I, listen, I totally agree. Greer waits too long to extend these guys. Hey, it should be done in year three, not year four. But the problem is when you're running an organization, you know, you can only tie up so much money. So, you know, if, if the guy bets on himself and wins, he wins. If he doesn't, then you can sign him cheap. Well, then yeah. the other thing. Why don't you trade these guys? Why wait to the midnight hour? You can trade because from what I understand, and I don't have no sources, but there was an individual a year ago very adamant that things were horrible between Wilkins and the front office. It was terrible. So to me, if you knew that was going to happen, and I love Wilkins, but get rid of that guy at the trade deadline so you're not waiting to 2025 to get a third-round pick. You're never going to get equal value. We all know this. But you can't – and for me, if I'm Ross, you can't keep coming to me about my investment, like you say, Larry, return on investment, Mm -hmm. that it keeps walking out the door. Like, there's no way you can pitch that where – Everybody can't be, oh, they just wanted to get the bag in a bottom feeder like Carolina. No, sir, you're not. Something about you is not closing. When I was a recruiting, they call it ABC, always be closing. He's not closing soon enough. And it, now he got Austin Jackson, and that was a miracle. And most of it was because Austin Jackson probably thought if he bet on himself, he would lose because this was only one season that he played well. But I just think the Dolphins have some bigger structural problems. And I wonder, with this new D.C., if we start losing, is he going to be the one that's going to be the scapegoat? And I think Mike McDaniel is on the hot seat. And I I think it's sad because I don't think he's the biggest problem. There was problems way before he walked in that locker room. Same thing with Flo. It was problems way – you can – every coach, maybe besides Gase, but – you could say there was some massive issues before they took the mantle and because they're in that seat, they're becoming like the, the scapegoat. And, and that starts with Ross again. Yeah. Because yeah, that's the thing. We gotta keep we gotta keep this in mind also. Who was who was the GM before before Greer? Tannenbaum. Yeah, and it's the same type and, of situation, man. It's Ross. right, exactly. Ross has this. This is Ross' responsibility because he is the CEO of the Miami Dolphins. He's I'm, he's the owner, so he needs to be the one. Okay, if, if Grizz not doing what he's supposed to do, then he needs to seek a, a, another GM. But for him to keep uh, uh, Grizz for for now, he he must he must see something with Grizz that he. That he wants for a reason for him to keep it, but it starts with Ross again. It, it's just like at, at, at an elementary school. I mean, at a school, the principal is over that school. Okay, if that school is having issues, okay, you can you can point at the teacher, yes, but the principal has to be the one that overlook and say, okay, listen, you gotta get on the right track, or you or we're gonna have to you gonna be gone. It still points back to the owner. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's and I agree. Yeah, it's, 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 that's what it's doing. You can point I back agree. to and, the owner. And Greer, Greer's it's, biggest thing is Greer does these flashy things to make us all forget what, what actually went on. Exactly. Two years ago, he signed, he, he got Tyree Hill. Last year, he got Ramsey. So it keeps all the fans excited because you're bringing in this big name person who's great at their position. And you forget all the little things that went on before yes. that. Yes, that's what they do. Guys, I got to run because I got to get up early in the morning. But I really appreciate you having me. It was an awesome time. Love you Good guys. You, Larry. I'll be back. Oh, it was, it was Larry. Larry. Join me and I'll, I'll be back, man. It was awesome. Yeah. I really appreciate you having oh, me. You're welcome good, to join us anytime. Peace, you love can up, anytime brother. you want. We Peace, appreciate you having up, you. Larry. Yes, sir. Really? All of you Peace guys. Love it. Nay, nay, everybody. Up, everybody. Crazy Doll fan, Winters, Papa, John, Mounty. Shake, I'll talk yes. to you guys all very soon. Later, guys. Fins up. Later. Fins up. Nice. Fins up. Later, okay. Yeah, and I wanted to comment to someone that says that I'm forgetting that these guys have high high dollar talent. Uh, Wilkins in particular, I didn't forget nothing. Uh, I, I just think that Greer could have did more to make that situation different. Um, 
maybe putting a transitional tag on him, you know, and and, and trading him. You know, in, in business, you can't just have your investment walk away. I'm using these two as an example because it's recent, but it's, it's the ABG, maybe the Wilkins one, that's not a good one, but the ABG one, like that, that should have got done, especially with our situation with Bradley Chubb and Phillips. It seems that should have been a done deal. Um, he wasn't asking to break the bank. And you still couldn't close. In fact, people don't like to talk about this, but he went to play for Flo. You know, the tyrant, the person that people blamed for being the, the dictator, right? And he left the, the great kumbaya uh, ping pongs and barbecue ribs and, and the best cut grass, what, what we won that award, the, the best facilities, the best hamburger and cheese lady. And he went to play with on flow. Now, another thing I don't like about the Dolphins is the media machine because even, I don't know if you paid attention, but Van Ginkle's wife went on t- social media to disclaim a rumor that they put out there. Everybody all of a sudden, oh, he wanted to go home. They already bought a house. Well, Van Ginkle's wife went on social media and said, what is this house you're speaking of? We don't have no house here in Minnesota. <laughs> See, and that's part of the problem, and, and that's why I'm glad we got shows like this where the fans can interact and we can see through the the BS, the propaganda that's being put out there, because it is. It's no way, gentlemen, you have the talent that you have, especially last season. You have a three-game lead, right? You have a three-game lead. Joe Burrow goes down. Aaron Rodgers goes down. Buffalo looks like stir-fried trash. Uh, to me, Kansas City looked the most vulnerable than you ever had. And to me, you had three opportunities to cash in. You had the, well, four, the Tennessee game. If they won that game, I think it would have been a different overall production of what happened. And then you had the chance to go into Baltimore, right? Because everybody was saying Lamar is a, a running back and not a quarterback. We beat Lamar. A couple of times and you went up there and you got skull drug. You got embarrassed. And then you turn around, Buffalo, you have another opportunity to win the AFC East, right? Those are the goals that the coaching staff told the fans. We want to win the AFC East. Well, everything was there. You had the warm weather. You had the crowd. I don't think it was a, a blackout game. It was on TV. And you still crapped the bed. And then you want to cry that you went to Kansas City. Well, if you took care of business with the other games, you wouldn't have been playing Kansas City. You would have been hosting at home the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers if it would have went the way that it went with the wins from the other team. So to me, last year was unexcusable. And the way they reacted, they act like we had another game to play. You didn't even you didn't even see like they was discouraged that they lost. You you literally let Buffalo walk you down like a dog with a three game cushion and wet the bed. And I need to see some improvement. I hope this DC gets the opportunity to get his players in because a lot of people's not bringing this up. The DC uh Big Vangio he didn't get to pick his guys. Greer sent him guys and make it work. You know, and to me, what he did with what he had, you know, you got to give him some credit because it still was, what, a top 10 defense. People forget that. Um, and I hope McDaniel learns from his mistakes. Not the – the I don't need a long soliloquy in the p- press conference. Show me that you're learning how to get the plays in. Show me that you can run the ball when it's simple plays to get a first down. Stop with the fourth downs and a, a thousand yards to go to prove that you believe in your team. Like, because ultimately, it's impacting winning. And Tua, we all know, I'm not going to get on that because there's enough Tua fans that, you know, get up in arms when you talk about him. But he needs to, to me, he was thicker than a snicker. He was too big. He couldn't run. He couldn't move around. And now I think they're making him lose weight. Um, And then everybody else has to hold accountability, especially Tyreek Hill. I think at the moment he makes the most money out the offense. And you out here doing all this stuff off the off the field, because to me that that's not a leader. 
right? I know we're human beings, but when you're in leadership, you got to be able to be a good citizen on and off the field because now when you do these speeches, people are listening to you and not questioning your credibility, especially when it comes to a lot of the instances he's involved in. But I ain't going to lie, guys. I see another over 500 team, maybe 10, 11 win games and, and back in the playoffs. And um, it depends if they overcome their woes with winning when the lights are the brightest. And that's basically about it. I mean, and we're we going to spend all summer analyzing and the draft and, and, and trying to do our own GM. And it's going to be up to them to put up a shut up. Because to me, it's not fair that the fans, the prices are raising too. Like you're giving us a product that's mediocre, but you're raising the prices. That That's another thing. I'm glad I don't live in Miami and I didn't get suckered into season tickets because I'll, be, I'll probably be up there <laughs> looking for Greer. <laughs> but that's all I got, gentlemen. Nene, I live in New Jersey, 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 and I have a season ticket. We appreciate you, Nene. God we bless you. you. I, I, I learned we, the Dolphins only do, only deserve streaming. They don't deserve <laughs> me flying back and forth. That's a lot of money. Even though I got some money. I got some money because I'm smart about it. I save and use common sense. <laughs> but if they ever go and get a Super Bowl, I'll fly down there. But as of right now, uh, YouTube well, TV is the place for me. <laughs> we, we appreciate you, Nene, and we appreciate your service you've given to the country and all of us. Um, Airborne all the way. And you're more than welcome to join us anytime you want. Uh, my son's a major in the Army, and he's down in Columbia right now. Well, I live in uh, what is formerly known as Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Is they they well, named that's, it, they that's named where it he's, something, but it, it that's where he's Bragg. regularly stationed out of. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he okay. Well, we we had talked online because I was uh, for a while before I went to school. I was working with the special forces with some things that I did while I was in the military. So I still got some credentials over there in the special world, but. That that time yeah, he, is up. <laughs> right now, he's he'll be at Columbia for in Columbia for the next six months. He's he's at the embassy there. Okay, that's good. Hey, tell them no matter what, get your twenty. Don't let people quit you from getting these benefits because oh no, he nice he's definitely stuff. he's definitely doing that. He's already on. I think year fourteen or fifteen. Hold on for dear life because it's getting worse. <laughs> Everyone I talk to, they say, man, we can't wait to be like you and retire. I said, well, hold on and get your benefits. But again, yeah. thank you guys for letting me speak. You're more than welcome to join us anytime you want. You know, we're every Wednesday night, 845 is when we start. And we allow anybody up here unless unless we have a screamer. All right, my sister, take care. Have a good night, Nene. Peace, love, fins up. Peace, love, and fins up, Nene. Peace, love, and fins up. Let's let's go ahead and go around the room, I believe, with last words. Yeah, Who Mr. Won? Paul. Listen, thanks for having me up on the show. It was, it was a pleasure uh, being up here with you guys and also with, with Larry Kay. And um, it definitely uh, a, a pleasure um, to be up, to have Nene come aboard so um like i said we just have to wait and see what's going to happen um i'm not going to make but no predictions because people keep asking me about prediction i'm not making no predict no uh, prediction because the thing is we just have to see what's going to happen that plan and stuff and at the end of the day the front office has the they make the decisions we can sit here and say this and that but they make the decision whether we like it or not but um, hopefully um, we're going to go real, in the right quick, direction. Mr. Polk, real quick, you sure that's not John speaking? It sure sounds like <laughs> a lot of stuff that John would be saying. No, I'm rubbing it, off. It, it, no, because it's the truth. No, I, I, mean, I, it, I, I know, Mr. Polk. I yeah. know. I'm just, I'm just no. joking with you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's facts. Uh, you know, that's, that's the thing we have to learn. It, it, hey, this is NFL. It's the business. That's the other yeah. thing I'm learning too. It, it is a business, and that's yeah, the main not, thing. Yeah, 
It's definitely a business these days. It's not like it used to be. We right. appreciate you, Mr. Polk. We love you, Mr. Polk. And we look forward to having you again next week. Hey, thank you. Peace, love, and friends up. Peace, love, and friends up. Peace, love, and friends up. Peace, love, and friends up, family. Oh, man. Shake money. Yeah, man. Uh, appreciate you guys for having up, you know, up here. And, uh, you know, as always, man, you know. You gotta uh, wait, 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 shake, shake. You gotta, you gotta promote the show. You gotta promote the podcast for uh, Saturday, brother. Yeah, yeah, Saturday at noon, man. Uh, my co-host Dolphin Winters. We're gonna do a, a WrestleMania preview. We're gonna pre- preview at, on the Fins tailgate. We're just gonna, you know, we're we're doing some off-season off topics um, on weekends. You know what I'm saying? Just to change it up a little bit. And of course, on the regular season, we're gonna be back to the Dolphins talk, but. uh I appreciate it, everybody here. And, you know, um, once again, I was right about Christian Wilkins, and I want my trophy. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll get you your trophy. You going to be at – you going to be at – or are you coming yeah, yeah, to my I'll be party? There. I'm definitely going to be there. Are you coming to my party? Which one? April 19th and 20th. April 20th? Yeah. Where, where's that at? Gonna, where's that going to be at? Right here at the house. Anybody who wants to cook – you know, whether it's barbecue cooking, grilling, whatever, you know, you cook your favorite dish, $50 a person, and winner takes all, judged by the people. We'll be having cornhole raffles going on. Okay, Slam, and Sam, Sam, Slam, Slam and Sammy will be here DJing, all that. All right, that's what's up. Yeah, just from my, um, yeah, just from my, uh, I know you have one. So, but yeah, I'm, I'll definitely try to come through. Yeah, I'll be tag, I'll tag in it. All right. Fins up, everybody. Fins up, Shake. Mr. O'Halloran. The beer. Good night. Very good night tonight. Good conversation. Miss Nene needs to have her own show. Um, Yeah. Listen, I love knowledgeable people. I, I love opinions. I did not agree with everything she said, but I do agree with a lot of it. Um, and that that's what our show is all about. Um, being able to express yourself and talk and, and get your opinions out there and then talk about it. Um, I appreciate everybody out there that's been watching the last two hours, hit like, and subscribe. Peace, love, and fins up guys. Peace, love, fins up. Have a good night. Well, we got another one in the books, man, and it was a pleasure doing this one. I, I kind of want to end this one a little different tonight due to the circumstances that we have going on in our nations and on our shores. Uh, I'd like to send my thoughts and prayers to the men and women that their lives are affected by the uh, horrific act and accident that happened in uh, Baltimore and the shores last evening about 1.28 a.m. in the morning. Um, let us not forget that and that there and take this thing called life for granted it is given to us we only have one of them so with that being said when you sit there when we sit there and go to bed and sleep and pray or you sit there and just take a time out and sit there and say give thanks to be able to say i made it through one so we can get to the next one because you never know papa paul is always a pleasure brother yes sir yes sir i appreciate each and every one of y'all out there listening to us watching us um shout out to larry k and the fanatic fury make sure you join his, watch his shows watch tftg um and shake money with the blender other than that everyone have a blessed night peace love and thumbs up everybody